did not have a particularly good outing last year, or excuse me, last week, and they think that maybe Jerome Woods may start. We'll have to wait and see. A little bit of a quarterback controversy for Tulane coming into the second ball game. Yeah, from a sophomore to a fifth-year senior in Woods, because Doak Campbell Stadium will be awfully noisy here tonight. The man in the middle defensively for Tulane, and the Greenway believes it has its best defense in years, is Ray Benford, the middle linebacker. He's good. Exactly. He wears number 83 on his back. Why? He was a rush in, defensive end last year. Very mobile, very aggressive. They've gone to the 4-3 stack in lieu of the eight-man front. Look for him to be very active tonight. He looks ornery down on the field, doesn't he? Well, Keith and I will be upstairs, speaking of being down on the field. Say hello once again to our very own Barry Milligan. Hello, Barry. Hi, Paul. And, you know, one of the areas of suspect of this year's Florida State team may be the field goal kicking. And one dramatic NCAA rules change that will affect that is the fact that the goalposts have actually been moved five feet closer to bring them in line with the NFL regulations. Now, meanwhile, the hash marks on the field have remained the same for the college game. 17 and a half feet wider. So the closer the offense moves towards the goal line, the more dramatic the angles become. And the kicker for Florida State is a red shirt freshman Dan Mowry from right here in Tallahassee who did not attempt the field goal against BYU. So definitely there could be some added pressure, Paul, for the young man kicking perhaps his first field goal attempt of the season here at home. You better believe it, Barry. Well, a magnificent evening in Florida's capital city lies in store as FSU hosts the Green Wave of Tulane. We'll be back with our opening kickoff right after this. At the only God in Italian restaurant, as Chief Osceola knows so well, the Seminoles own an 11-game home winning streak dating back to the 1989 season, the last time Florida State lost at home against the Clemson Tigers. Florida State 13-2 in home openers under near legendary head coach Bobby Bowden. Always a great moment, the tradition of Garnet and Gold football. thousand fans on hand here tonight to greet this new college football season. Florida State has won the opening toss two. And we will see if the Seminoles have elected to receive or defer to the second half. Tulane will get the football first as FSU has elected to defer. <laughs> Putting the football on the tee for FSU will be number nine, a freshman, Dan Mowry. A little bit shaky on the West Coast 10 days ago in his debut against BYU. There is young Dan from Tallahassee Lincoln High School here. And deep to receive for Tulane, a trio of Greenway football players. The deepest of whom is number 34, Brandon Hamilton, a cornerback, 174-pound sophomore, flanked by number 17, Jay Young, and number nine, Willie Parnes. He, too, plays in the secondary, just a freshman, and it was two Parnes that Ole Miss on opening day in the Dome kicked the football. You want to keep it away from Hamilton if you can. Glad you're with us as FSU takes on very young Tulane. A Tulane team, as we will tell you, is absent of seniors. There will only be six senior starters tonight. Three on offense, three on defense for the Greenies. You don't get much younger than that, Keith, from this day and age. The young quarterback, Billy Duncan, Pacing, the sophomore from Kenner, Louisiana. Waiting to get the football, and it will either be Duncan or Woods when Tulane runs its first play from scrimmage. A knuckleball that will be returned by Hamilton. Hamilton falls forward, comes out across the 20 to the 22-yard line. And the tackle was made by Reggie Freeman, the outside linebacker. And yes, Duncan is our quarterback. In 1990, he only threw the ball twice, and of his two attempts, one was an incomplete pass, the other was an interception. You are familiar with the hard-nosed Chance Miller. Dennis will play both in the backfield and on the flanks as a receiver. 
and Tulane's offensive line strongest on the left side will identify him in a minute Charles Herman the center is the only other returning senior he or the returning starter he and Miller first play of the night Duncan nowhere to go he lost the football it's a fumble but he was hit hard Reggie Freeman who made the tackle on the opening kickoff leveled Duncan who couldn't find an open receiver Tulane fell on it it's second down it did not take long for the 6'1 junior from Clewiston, Florida, who had a great game against BYU to get through this offensive line. You see that Ernst, Estep, and Herman are all seniors. Bodine is a sophomore. Bruce in his first collegiate start. For FSU, Ostaszewski, Cheney, and Simpson, the linebacking core, anchored by Marvin Jones and that man, Kurt Carruthers, the second leading tackler for FSU a year ago, a three-year letterman. A loss of one, second and 11, the play clock winding down, and yes, Duncan took too long at the line of scrimmage. The head coach of the Green Wave and Greg Davis was concerned how this young man would handle playing in Doak Campbell Stadium. He has not done very well. Tulane will spend a lot of time at the line of scrimmage. Davis's offense geared towards trying to see what's in the tackle boxes and then adjusting, audibleizing from there. The defensive backs for Florida State, as you see here, Buckley, Fowler, Brown, and McCorvey are going to be trying to disguise coverages because they know plays are called at the line of scrimmage. It is second down and 16 yards to go, and Chance Miller is hammered as he comes up to the left side of the line of scrimmage. Carl Simpson, the junior right defensive end from back Georgia was the first man there, number 95, and a sea of garnet and gold jerseys joined him. Tulane was successful last year, and there's a couple of plays, as you saw in the opening, running this type of delayed draw, but Simpson staying right with him, number 95. Nowhere to go. The nickel package is in now for FSU defensively. An obvious passing situation on third down and 17 yards approaching. Four wide receivers for the green way. And Duncan works out of the shotgun, a low snap. Gets it off, fires over the middle, it is caught. 25, 28, not enough for the first down. Sales, Jay Young, the freshman wide receiver from Pensacola, Florida, playing for Tulane. Errol McCorvey, the boundary quarterback you see in your screen, came up to make the stop. And it's three downs and out for Tulane. Just underneath routes, four wide receivers. Young working left to right. A good hit by Fowler, but he doesn't wrap up. Young continues upfield, but not enough for the first down. Chip Clark will be picking to very dangerous Terrell Buckley. And Clark faces a 10-man rush and does get it off, although it is a poor punt. It takes a two-lane roll, and here comes Buckley from his 29. And he's run out of bounds, and a flag goes down as he comes across the 35 and a shove into the two-lane sideline at the 39. Scott Sanchez, a reserve tight end for the Green Wave, made the stop as Casey Weldon will head toward the FSU sideline, coming off a strong performance against BYU, and you see the numbers right at 1,600 yards from a year ago. Ampley is healthy and will start. Bennett with the three touchdowns against the Cougars. And along the offensive line, Robbie Baker was the lineman, the outstanding lineman against BYU. Flipping against the return team. First down. FSU penalized, as you see, the remaining starting lineups for Tulane. 15 yards, or half the distance in this case. McDowell, Thornhill, State, and Brandon Hamilton on the court in the secondary. So FSU begins first and 10. The fullback is Bennett. The tailback is Amp Lee. And from the 22, play action too late. Weldon down the middle of the field. Wide open. This may go the distance. Lonnie Johnson, the tight end. Can he get in? Yes, he can. Touchdown. Johnson. His first career touchdown.
touchdown grab for Johnson. Tulane in the 4-3 stack, two safeties. You're going to get three upfield men, two wide receivers, the tight end all alone. No one even close. Johnson starting ahead of Warren Hart. No receptions in the BYU game. The first catch for 1991, 78 yards and a big one. Mowry's point after splits those narrowed uprights. Timeout on the field. We have played less than three minutes, and it's Florida State by a touchdown. Reintroducing a glorious name for a glorious new automobile. The 1992 Buick Roadmaster. For those of us who thought that Tulane would not be a blitzing team when they came in here tonight, would be able to avoid the big play early. Casey Weldon made us all look very foolish, didn't he? Watch this as he finds his tight end, Lonnie Johnson, streaking up the hash mark. Play action to get some people sucked up. Vertical pressure all the way down. Johnson wide open right there at the hash. Tulane going to that 4-3 stack with two safeties versus the eight-man front they used to run with three deep people. You see Weldon just following a little nonchalantly. Yeah, that's six. That's six. Coach, I told you we should have run that play. I told you that was the play that would work. A year ago, Coach Bobby Bowden rolled over Tulane in a big way. And it looks like Mr. Bowden tonight seeking his 207th career victory is going to put some big numbers up on the board. Tulane begins first and 10 at its 20-yard line. Now for this young team, again, it's only seniors among the starters being Ernst Estep and Herman along the front line. Very important here, Keith, that they settle down, or this could be 14 to nothing, 21 to nothing in the blink of an eye as that was, that first uh, with Florida State being fingers. able, excuse me, Paul, with Florida State being able to score that quick, what Tulane has to do, must do, is keep Florida State's offense sitting on the bench. Wilbert Erson up top, Steve Ballard at the bottom of your picture, Miller, the lone set back behind Duncan. And this is Miller, daylight on the left side, isn't he something? That's a first down. A year ago, Chance Miller rushed for 96 yards against Florida State. And it is a rather rude greeting committee of Greenies who welcome Terrell Buckley of FSU to the sideline. And look at Greg Davis. Is he hot? You're coming into extremely hostile territory in Campbell Stadium. And you get run out of bounds on your own sideline. Florida State people out there. I'll tell you something. Chance Miller, 5'9", 195 pounds. You saw see there what he did last year. He's not going to walk away from anything, and his buddies aren't going to let anything happen to him. Young team, very fired up, coming into hostile land. Uh, they're going to be aggressive. Miller said he was not intimidated by Florida State. He said those Seminole players don't have wings. They aren't angels. They're human just like me. He gained 11, first and 10, trailing by a touchdown, only at second possession. And Duncan with a flag down. He took too much time a second time. And it will not take long for that senior quarterback and Jerome Woods to enter the game, game if Duncan Joe. keeps this up. 25 seconds count. 15. In its first possession, Tulane lost a yard on the sack of Duncan, ran the ball for a yard, gained 12 on a completion following a five-yard delay a game penalty, and then had to punt. His numbers last week against the Rebels of Old Men. First and 15. the Seminole faithful, their top tackler a year ago as a freshman, flattens Miller. There you see Jones, a sophomore, and we think he's been around forever. Third team All-American last year as a true freshman, 133 tackles. You just like to watch this guy play. Second down and 14 yards to go. The line of scrimmage, the two-lane 28. The receivers to this side are Ballard and Robert Erson at the bottom of your picture. Miller the lone setback, play action to him. Duncan, floating it, down the middle, looking for Ballard, and he overshoots him at the Seminole 35-yard line. The arm of Duncan is one which led his high school program in Kenner, Louisiana, John Curtis, to two separate state championships. 
He does have a strong arm, as evidence there, although he overshot the intended receiver in Steve Ballard. Anyone you talk to about Duncan will tell you that he can throw the ball. Uh, arm strength is not uh, a problem for this youngster. Coming in last week as a starter for the first time, 6 of 16, as we've seen, didn't perform extremely well. Woods brought in in the fourth quarter. Big chance for him here tonight. Rod Max and Ballard wide this way on third and 14 from the 28. Young and Urson to the left side. Out of the shotgun. Duncan doesn't have much time, does he? Great grab, Ballard. Into Seminole territory. Inside the 45, the 40, and down to the 35-yard line. How did he make that catch? A gain of 37 yards by Tulane's number 31. In the game last week, his backup, Rodnax, number five, made a great catch against Ole Miss. Watch the right hash mark. You got Corey Fuller one-on-one. -on -one. He gets beat. Fuller's making up ground. Can't get his head back for the ball. But Ballard catches it right off his face mask. Excellent concentration. Continues to work upfield. The junior out of Metairie converts the first down. That must help his confidence level. Trailing seven to nothing. Still early in the first quarter. Duncan got it away and dumps it incomplete as Carl Simpson, the junior defensive end of 275 pounds, was all over Duncan right away. No flag down, no intentional grounding. Second down for the Greenway. Simpson with one sack of Ty Detmer last week. One early already here in the first quarter, trying to get number two. Just a little bit late getting to him and Duncan able to get the ball off. Fake to the right, roll back, naked boot to the left. Simpson upfield shoulder right on him. The left tackle Vernon Ernst, the senior, never even saw or slowed down Carl Simpson. The end off, inside handoff is given to Harold Dennis. Two backs for the first time in the backfield for Tulane. And Dennis, the 204-pound junior, picked up a couple of yards. It is third down and eight yards to go for the Greenway at the Florida State 30 three-yard line. Look Near that, right hand. Look at that front line for Tulane. A couple of people shifted around. Bruce was a defensive lineman last year, number 77. You saw there move the tight end in the spring and now playing right tackle. Tulane went to the shotgun this year for the first time under Greg Davis to give this young quarterback more time to throw. Let's see if it pays off here. Floating it deep in double coverage. Batted around incomplete. Nearly intercepted. The intended receiver, Wilbert Erson, at the five-yard line, had Seminoles all around him. Leon Fowler was there for FSU. One in that pack, Errol McCorvey, was there as well. As you see Buckley talking with Fowler, another look. Zone coverage, Fowler trying to split the two receivers. People matched up, McCorvey there, right underneath. Buckley coming over the top. Fowler doing a good job of playing center field and helping out the threat. Corey Fuller was there, too. Here is Chip Clark, who got away a 71-yarder against Florida State last year in the Dome, trying to pooch this one, kill it in the corner against FSU. Where does it bound? I right, hit it wide. And rolls into the FSU. Ends on. It'll be brought out to the 20-yard line. First and 10 for the Knowles. 9.36 to go in quarter number one, and the Seminoles lead 7-0. You are 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Now that's barbecue at its best. Because everybody loves to be at study. There's a hang em high lynch mob coming to Aggieland, but one Mala Ombre stands ready to defend Kyle Field from the Louisianians. Hit him, heal him, and stretch him out. Tigers and Aggies. Live next weekend on Prime Network. Just back, and here is Casey Weldon set to go to work. He is now two for two as he comes it upfield to the 30 and out of bounds across the 30 at the 31 yard line. Eric Terrell, the junior wide receiver, who had six separate receptions and a victory over BYU on opening night. Rod McDowell, the left quarterback for Tulane, made the stop. Weldon opened up, pardon me, Keith, with a string of what he hit his first six in a row before the incompletion against the Cougars, and he's starting hot again tonight. That he did. You see Terrell breaking out to the left there. Those six catches last week doubled his career reception at five coming into the season. Kev 
Ross McCorvey is the wide receiver to the top of your picture on first and 10 from the 32. Weldon looks to set up the screen, and that may be pass interference. Loose ball, incomplete. They were looking for Edgar Bennett, and it was Batiste, number 54, along with Ruffin Hamilton, number 44. They were all over that one. You can make a case here for pass interference, could you not? Did the linebacker arrive before the ball did? Double screen. Casey looks right, comes back left. We'll get a good look here. Looks like Hamilton, number 44, is all over Bennett. No call. Good read by Hamilton to break it up. Forces Florida State into a second and long. Double screen threat setting up on both sides. Hamilton reads his key, comes to his right offense, his left, breaks it up. Twin receivers in McCorvey and Eric Terrell. Terrell now in motion. And on the counter. Well, uh, this is a busted play, and here comes Weldon. Bad connection with Amp Lee, and Casey followed Amp into the hole, brings it out across the 35 and up to the 36, maybe the 37-yard line. This was not a design play. Not a design play at all. Weldon just rolls out to his right a little too far. Amp Lee was to get it on isolation action on his left or right as we look at it, and, and now it's just survival. Get as much as you can and get down. It's as if Casey thought the play was going to the right side. Everyone else went left. Well, quarterbacks make that mistake a time or two. Third and six, however. And the line of scrimmage, the Seminole 36-yard line. Weldon takes the snap. Steps up. The pocket collapsing, and he fires it upfield. Skips it up incomplete at the Seminole 45-yard line. Intended for Lonnie Johnson. And Tulane's defense, far more impressive this series than they were when they surrendered the home run to Johnson on the 78-yard bomb for a score. Tulane with good coverage downfield. Weldon going to his third read, the tight end read. Lonnie Johnson just settling over the middle, unable to get the ball to him in a fashion that he can catch it. There you see the numbers on player. Not a real good outing last week. Kicking to Wilbert Urson. And he got this one. Hung it very high. Urson makes it over the shoulder catch at his 12 and is scooted out of bounds across the 15 at the 17-yard line. Well, Scott Player, the fifth-year senior, wanted some consistency. A week ago, he had knocked 153 yards, but also had a shank of 13. Bobby Bowden will be very proud of his senior kicking specialist there as he booms it 52 yards with great hang time. Consistency is the word there with Player. Everyone knows he can do it, and he do it when he needs to. And can Billy Duncan do it on Tulane's third series? With a clap of the hands, the green wave up to the line of scrimmage. Charles Herman, the 264-pound senior center, bends over the football. He's a Florida native from Panama City. A new running back, Sean Fagan, a sophomore. The lone setback behind Duncan. He'll take the football here and cut up here. He dives across the 20, out to the 22-yard line. Kirk Carruthers, a senior linebacker, knocked him down. Delane staying with a two tight end, two wide out, just run the ball, off tackle, one back set. Get a good look at Carruthers there calling the defensive signal. Again, as we indicated on their earlier drive, the key now is to keep control of the ball. They were successful last time, although they didn't convert points. Another opportunity here. I'll pick up a six. Ballard to the bottom of your screen. He had that big 37-yard reception, the previous possession. And this is a gaping hole off the right side for Fagan. Fagan out across the 30. That's a two-lane first down at the 32-yard line. And junior defensive and Troy Sanders, 261 pounder for FSU, replacing Carl Simpson, made the stop. Tight end comes down, you kind of slide the guard and tackle around, and your corner gets blocked. There's a seam there, the safety has to come up, the linebacker gets cut off, then it's wide open. Tulane doing a good job of springing loose to a sophomore running back out of Jonesville, Sean Fagan. New tight end, uh, Keith and Scott Sanchez to the left side, play action, Duncan up the boundary, another grab by Ballard! Into Seminole territory, inside the 45 to the 43. He got open. Richard Coase was with him, stride for stride, a sophomore free safety, and Ballard made an outstanding catch, and the ball was well placed. Hits a gain of 25. Play action look, and then he pulls it back and hits it in the seam. Florida State in zone coverage underneath and behind, and Coase has to come over to make the, make the stop. Clifton Abram, number two there, the corner, not close enough on the undercover. First 
and Penn in Seminole land. Down a score. Duncan hands it off the left side. Dennis, who sees a sliver of daylight. That goes away, but he's inside the 40, down to the 38-yard line. Big Howard Dinkins out of Jacksonville in on the tackle. The outside linebacker. Dinkins. Howard Dinkins for FSU, Keith, was not completely healed against BYU from, from some back problems that he had suffered in the fall, and he didn't have a great game. Didn't get a lot of reps during fall camp because of that back, and he's having to play himself back into position here. I'll pick up a four. Second and fourth, the Seminole 39-yard line, and Chance Miller is lasso. A loss of four yards. He was hit in the backfield and knocked down. The man on the stop was DeAndre Clark out of Winter Garden, Florida, the 266-pound defensive lineman. Watching working right to left, DeAndre Clark just falls in right behind a pulling lineman, and Miller doesn't even get an opportunity to get started. That play really stuck if you are a Tulane Greenway fan and it was an exceptional play by Clark to come charging through third and 11 Miller stands back in shotgun formation with his quarterback Billy Duncan looking to convert on third down throwing near midfield over the middle incomplete there was contact the intended receiver was Jay Young and here comes the late flag Errol McCorvey was on his back the fine quarterback and that flag was about as late as you could expect it Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator, is about four strides onto the field asking, what was that? I think that flag came from section four, about eight rows up. Very, very intense and studious. Mickey Andrews looking on, and he, he, he'll be more intense than he is studious on this, on this call. Rod Daly's defense, the referee, there was obvious contact. All right, you be the judge. It's the right arm. The right arm is what gets on his helmet and shoulder pad. You talk about Mickey Andrews, here's his philosophy. You don't reach greatness on ability. You reach greatness with ability and a lot of hard work. A lot of fundamentals in his 25th year of college coaching. One of Bobby Bowden, great staff member. It is first and 10. Down early and for the well let's see this was not a delay a game but it is a procedure call an outside performer move or rather an interior lineman move prior to the snap and that will cost two lane five illegal procedure interior lineman moving first 15 in terms of penalty yards tonight that's the third time that a five yard infraction has been marched off against Greg Davis's ball club Florida State guilty of 11 infractions for right at 100 yards last week. We're already seeing flag day here at Campbell Stadium here in the first quarter. At the Seminole 41-yard line, Duncan down the line. This is Chance Miller bouncing outside, lowers his head, is cracked at the 35 and shoved across the sideline by Terrell Buckley. With help from LeVon Brown, the strong safety number 31. We ought to mention LeVon Brown getting the nod tonight in place of John Davis for Florida State. Brown, the junior, from Moorhaven, Florida. He's about number four on that strong safety depth chart, but if there is one position in the secondary that's beat up and bruised early, it is the strong safety slot, and Brown opens tonight for FSU. Brown, a free safety last year. Actually, third team, as you mentioned, John Davis that hasn't practiced all week with a bad back. Number two, Chris Hall, was hurt in Monday's practice, forcing LeVon into action in the base defensive scheme. Dangerous Steve Ballard, who's burned the nose twice. He's playing to the bottom of your screen. Miller, again, will drive for a first down. Ramming the ball inside the 25 and keeping those legs going. He runs into Leon Fowler, the free safety, and Troy Sanders from the defensive line at the Seminole 22. And Tulane is driving on Florida State. Nothing fancy. Carruthers misses a tackle. Jones runs out of place. Fowler has to come up and do, do the job. 5'9", 195 pounds. And trust me, folks, he's not intimidated by anything going on here tonight. 
there is a timeout taken on the field, called by Florida State trying to slow down Tulane. And we'll be right back after these words from Olive Garden Italian Restaurant, where all the best of Italy is yours. Impossible? At the Olive Garden, we don't know the meaning. Florida State before 60,000 fans in jam-packed Dope Campbell Stadium. Leads by a touchdown, a 78-yard Casey Weldon, who is tied in in Lonnie Johnson for the score. But right now, young quarterback Billy Duncan is driving two lane against America's number one ranked team. And this is a young man making only his second collegiate start. And while he was shaky early, he certainly has settled down. Florida State playing its very first game in history. Ranked number one in the nation in the stadium. 22 Miller again dances outside and he's a yard shy of another first down. Fowler from the secondary comes up to make the stop. How is he doing that, Keith? That left side of the line is giving him some daylight and Miller is relentless, methodically ramming for six and seven yard gains. All Tulane is doing is coming with the two tight ends, whichever side Florida State goes strong to. You'll see here Florida State strong to the right side as we look at it. So they call an audible and they work to the left side. You've got everyone matched up. And if the free safety doesn't come up quick and if a linebacker gets scraped, there's a seam there. He can run forever. This is the 10th play of the drive for Tulane. And again, they make a mistake. Eric Fillmore, the left tackle, number 74, jumped. That'll cost them five yards. Back they go. And out comes Fillmore. Fillmore a junior, but a J.C. transfer. So this is actually his first time, first season under Davis's offense. Dead ball, procedure, interior lineman moving. Second down. Out is Fillmore, replacing him as the starter. Number 75, Vernus Ernst. And to Ernst's left side, Robert Urson is the split in. The flanker Ballard to the bottom of your picture. The big one for FSU is that pass interference call. Second and six now, as the ball is pushed back to the 18. Duncan calls it at the line of scrimmage. Time winding down, he'll get it off. He's floating it for the corner in Ballard, and Ballard cannot make the grab. Buckley was there. Well, you now have put Buckley on Tulane's most dangerous receiver early in Ballard. That will be an interesting matchup throughout the evening. Well, Ballard's used to making big catches. He had the touchdown reception that whipped Syracuse last year in the big upset to Lane over Syracuse. Buckley with a great job of coverage there. It's so hard when that ball is floated in the air and underthrown for the defensive back to A, keep from interfering, or B, the receiver to see it and come back and get ahead of him and make the reception. Great job by Buckley. Duncan has completed three passes. He is three of seven for 75 yards. And Tulane is going to call timeout facing third and six at the Seminole 18 yard line. And that's not an unwise thing to do. You have to admire that, for this is their best shot. They have driven the ball twice, but never quite this deep, Keith. And uh, they won't get this opportunity too many times. And their best chance to not the score at 7 0. Exactly. Tulane doing a great job of keeping FSU's offense on the bench, the defense for Florida State on the field. Duncan and Davis and you see Jerome Woods there, number 16 planning a little strategy. Very important for them to convert every opportunity they have into points. His head coach and Greg Davis said, look how long it has taken George Welsh at the University of Virginia and how long it took Bill McCartney at Colorado to turn those two programs around. Here I am in my fourth season. Just give us a chance and we will get the best collection of players here that can win for a university that is geographically at a disadvantage position between the Southwest Conference and the Southeast Conference. And academically, it's challenging for Tulane is somewhere between Rice and Harvard. But Davis has done a fine job. And certainly his game plan is effective here. It is third and six. The 18, the blitz is on. Duncan fires toward the end zone. Urson cannot make the catch. He was open. 
What a move he had laid on the FSU defensive back in Mac Knight. Well, check that. That was eh, Mac Knight. It was. He put a move on him and had the ball been a bit lower, that's a catch if not a score. Knight stumbles, the ball just a little bit overthrown or Urson would have been right there. Florida State coming with pressure, man-to-man -man coverage. Mac Knight in on the nickel defense. Urson gets open, Duckin just misses him. Field goal time here for tiny Gary Butler. He stands all of 5-6. This will be a 35-yard poke for him into those narrowed goal posts to his right. Duncan Holt puts it down and Butler kicks it. Plenty of leg and it is good. Tulane is on the board with 416 remaining in quarter number one. Your score. Florida State seven and the green wave from New Orleans three. The confidence beginning to show in Tulane. Rattled early. Duncan drove him. What'd that take? 15 plays to get that done and Butler drills the 35-yard field goal. For those of us with good memories or those of us that have cheated and looked at last year's game notes, you'll remember Florida State was up only 10 to nothing in the Superdome last year before uh, pulling away from Tulane in the second half. Tulane has always played Florida State tough in the first half. People get uh, a little cantankerous when you talk about, uh, oh, Tulane can't be that tough because the average margin of victory here at Campbell Stadium is 41 points in the four meetings they've had here. But Tulane always playing Florida State tough. And let's never forget about the fact that Florida State went to the Superdome in 1983 and actually lost the ball game to Tulane, the first meeting ever. Subsequently, uh, Tulane had to forfeit for an ineligible player. For FSU, twin safeties deep. Tiger McMillan, number 33, along with Marquette Smith. Standing back at their 10-yard line, they're telling us there that they don't believe Gary Butler will kick this ball into the end zone. This is Marquette. It's off his fingertips. He picks it up at the five and heads the other way. Hit hard at the 15-yard line. And a late white jersey in there, too, but no flag. And the ball marked at the 16-yard line is Marquette Smith, the true freshman from Castleberry, Florida, and the USA's High School Player of the Year for a season ago. Brings that one back. Brandon Hamilton made the tackle. Rather than 15 plays, that was a drive of a dozen. Covered 65 yards. And most importantly, Keith, took 408 off the clock and kept the ball away from Florida State's offense. Florida State's intensity not good on the last series. From the offensive side, we'll see what Casey and company can do. Here is Amplee trying to turn on the voltage. Yeah, he does. How does he make people miss like that? Ran through two tackles at the 20 and out to the 24-yard line. A yard shy of a first down. The weak side linebacker, Shane Wiegand, a sophomore from Laporte, Texas, number 47 was in on the tackle there. Wiegand made 10 stops last week against SEC member Ole Miss. Here's a look at it. If you look at it, it just doesn't look like Lee's running very fast, but you just see opposing jerseys laying on the ground. They can't seem to wrap up on him. He keeps moving upfield with that, uh, I guess, elusiveness. On second and one, this is Bennett, and Bennett is stacked up at the line of scrimmage and driven back. He went nowhere. <laughs> That's rare that you see Bennett have that happen to him. Darren McGowan, the defensive end, was the first man there. Single back set with Bennett back there. It just never got started. Tulane doing a good job of pushing offensive linemen backwards and that not enabling Bennett to find a crease or a seam anywhere. He tries to bust it outside, but McGowan's all over him. The freshman, Kez McCorvey, wide left. Terrell for the top of your picture. Possession snap, third and four. Weldon fires. First down, Knowles. McCorvey upfield at the 29-yard line as he hooked up in front of Brandon Hamilton, the Green Wave quarterback. McCorvey earned a battlefield promotion to earn the start this evening. Matt Fryer, who had opened up against BYU, had a couple of key drop passes, and he was demoted, and Kez McCorvey, the freshman from Gautier, Mississippi, promoted. Just a simple push route that he turns out. McCorvey, or excuse me, uh, Kesman Corby with two catches last week, as you say, earning that promotion. 
Doing a good job of converting the first down. First and 10, the Knowles with the lead and the football, and here comes Lee, shoved out of bounds and into the Seminole sideline at the 33-yard line, a gain of four. For Amp Lee, a year ago, 16 touchdowns is the number there, Keith, that makes <laughs> me blink. He had some huge games, especially toward the end of the year. He carved up Florida for 147 yards rushing, scored three touchdowns. One was a reception. Rushed for 86 yards against Penn State and scored two touchdowns in the Blockbuster Bowl. A gain of four sets up second and six, and Lee will take the pitch to the wide side and explode across the line of scrimmage and into the secondary for a first down. First down goals at their 44-yard line. Mark Thornhill, the free safety, made the tackle. Florida State with 275 yards of rushing last week against Brigham Young. Lee with 75 of them. His partner in, in rushing up front, Bennett, had 98 of them. Just look at the, at the nice swivelness. He runs kind of upright, except when contact comes. When contact comes, he gets his body down, his shoulders, his head, and everything into the tackler, and he moves so fluidly that that's what makes people miss. Another first down for FSU, leading 7-3, to three, late in the first quarter, and this is caught by Terrell at midfield, and he attracts attention at the 49-yard line. Thornhill on the stop, it's a gain of six, and for Casey Weldon, that is his fourth completion of this football game. On a warm night, Casey's breathing a little heavy there, isn't it? Naked boot, Tulane gets a good, does a good job of getting pressure. Watch Terrell catch the ball and then try to turn back inside. Great inspiration these receivers refer to, and that being Lawrence Dalsey, and that being the ability to run after the catch is made, and all of them are trying to follow in his footsteps. Here is Lee. He'll have the first down as he dances in the green wave country. Inside the 45, Mike Stade cutting down about five high at the 42 of Tulane. Bobby Bowden says that Amp Lee is one of the five best running backs that's ever worn the garden and gold of FSU. And what he has, you can't coach. That ability to make defenders with excellent position miss. Eh? BYU found that out the hard way. 13 carries, 75 yards, a single touchdown. Came out after he hurt his shin. Just a bruise. Plenty of people looking on and cheering on. First down number five is followed up by first down number six and more. Inside the 25. To the 20. Three-yard line sails at Gravenet with Ray Benford. That stout two-lane middle linebacker on his back. The game is a 21 yards by FSU's number 22. Single back set. Tulane, if you can do it, Florida State can do it too. Does a good job of making people miss. State actually gets turned around and comes back to help out with Benford on the tackle. This should be the final play of the first quarter. Seconds remain. Seven to three nose. Not this time for Edgar Bennett. Driven back at the line of scrimmage. Hit first by Darren McGowan, and that'll do it for quarter number one. FSU ranked number one has found that Tulane, a 41-point underdog, has come to this stadium unintimidated. Seven to three, our score. More after this from Coors Light. The silver bullet won't slow you down. It's the right there now. Both sides with six first downs apiece in an eventful first 15 minutes of play. With Keith Jones, I'm Paul Kennedy. We welcome you back on Sunshine Network to sold out Dope Campbell Stadium in the capital city of Tallahassee. A bomb from Weldon to his tight end of all people, Lonnie Johnson, and the PAT by Mowry, the seven for FSU, and a 35-yard field goal. Off the toe of Tulane's fine kicker, Gary Butler, the 10 points registered in this home opener for FSU. Here comes Casey Weldon, the general. The line of scrimmage, the 22 as we open up quarter number two. It's second and 10. Weldon on the roll with interference. Guns toward the boundary. Terrell makes the catch. Fights his way close to the 15-yard line. And look at that. Seven separate white jerseys around it. A swarming green wave defense could not prevent Weldon from threading the needle to Terrell. 
with a lot of agility and a lot of mobility, Florida State trying to get Weldon out on the corner to pressure. Terrell does a good job of getting low and protecting that ball from three green wave defenders. This is the 11th play of this drive. Casey with five completions. And of the 10 he's already run in this march, seven have come on the ground, three have been in the air. Here is number four in the air. Caught by McCorvey. An outside spin. Well, it earned the first down. He couldn't get away from the score inside the 10-yard line. Brandon Hamilton. The sophomore corner from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That's a lonesome feeling, isn't it? To be out in the flat there, Keith, with someone as dangerous as double eights and Kez McCormick. It really is. You feel like you're a, you're a man out there on an island and being run over by a, a boatload of pirates. Quick step by Weldon. McCorvey's working upfield, just turns in, and now it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's, it's McCorvey and Hamilton. And the key there is to not try to make the big hit, but just latch on and don't let go. The sixth completion for Weldon. And on the delay, an inside handoff and some pounding there. Edgar Bennett worked over pretty good as he works the ball to the nine-yard line. Ray Benford, number 83, the middle linebacker, in that new 4-3 scheme that Tulane has put in there. Hardy McCrary replaced John Devlin as Tulane's defensive coordinator. And this 4-3 scheme only allowed Ole Miss one touchdown last week. FSU has been limited to but one, but Britain two. Can Weldon make it two scores into the end zone? He goes and he misses an open McCarthy. Make that 84, Warren Hart, the 258-pound tight end, and where McCorvey weighs about 182, he's 75 pounds lighter than Hart, but he was wide open. What, what Casey's going up and telling Hart is that route is probably designed for Hart to turn inside and then move back to the offense's right, his left, so Weldon led him back like he was doing a spin move. Hart didn't complete it, couldn't get to the ball. Weldon on third down, goes into the end zone again, this time it worked. The Knowles came right back with it and scored. Hart, the touchdown. Thirteen to three, Seminole. Casey Weldon with not one, but two touchdown strikes in the first half alone, and Warren Hart who had a single reception against BYU. He says he's a better blocker than he is a receiver. Pretty good hands here. Quick step, quick five-step drop. Hart's just wide open. Weldon does a great job on, on a particularly easy pass with no interference and just laying it in. When's the last time Florida State had their first two touchdowns? Receptions to tight end. <laughs> That's the case here. Mowry with the extra point. 14 to three, FSU. Casey Weldon has just hurled his second touchdown strike of the night and his fourth of the season. Watch this ball come right at you. Tight end release, works upfield, nobody underneath, and there's a happy moment for a big man. Florida State with only two tight ends they said available this evening. The normal starter, the regular starter, and Marvin Farrell hurt his knee against BYU. And Lonnie Johnson and Warren Hart were to get all the work. Remember Reggie Johnson and Dave Roberts from last season and the season before? Both those guys have graduated. And it's up to Hart and Johnson to carry the load, and they've done a great job in the first half here. Here comes Brandon Hamilton from his five-yard line. He slipped at the 15. He would have been leveled there by Seminole Chris Keene, number 37. Hamilton trying to dodge Keene, who you see in your screen, went down. Hamilton brought it back a dozen yards. Okay, we have said it before, Keith Jones. Important here for Duncan and Tulane to hold on to the football, or FSU will put another touchdown on that board rather quickly. Well, they've proven that they can run the ball effectively. We'll see what defensive adjustments Florida State make to try to counter. A rare eye-back formation. Dennis Dotson, Miller, the fullback. This is Dennis hitting the backfield, but he falls forward and saves the play. He gained a yard. The first man through, James Cheney. Missed him in the backfield. 14-play drive, by the way, for FSU, covering 84 yards. 
close to six minutes eaten off that first half clock. Thing unusual is the right hand column. Usually the time reads a minute and 38, two minutes and 12. That time over five minutes on the drive. Corey Broadnax to the top of your screen. In a moment, the wide receiver. Number five entering the game for the first time. Play action to Miller. Duncan comes to the boundary. Or they tried to undershoot rather. In Dennis underneath. Incomplete. Let's check in with Barry Milligan. Thanks, Paul. I'm on the sidelines with Mike Morris, the All-American offensive guard who is still out with a broken foot. Mike, it's got to be tough for you watching all the action. Uh, yes, it is. It's the first game in four years that um, I've sat out, you know, uh, home game. And uh, it hurt me real bad when I saw the, the team come out on the field and the crowd going crazy. Uh, I miss it, and I'm hoping that I have a speedy recovery next week. I start running, and I just hope that things will be okay. Well, they're hoping now to have you back for the Michigan game, but you were saying awfully tough timing-wise to come back and have your first game against one of the top five teams in the country. Um, I'm hoping uh, the daughter lets me play uh, next week against, um, I think it's Western Michigan, um, so I can get my timing down. Um, like you said, I can't go in the half step against Michigan because they have a great defense, and um, I think they won today. I'm not too sure, and um, I really have to play, up, you know, to my best ability because, like, you know, like I said, it's hard for me uh, to come back, and uh, I really want to show people that um, I can not come back from a broken foot and, you know, to show that I am, you know, one of the top guards in the nation. Well, best of luck with your rehab. Paul, back to you. Thanks, Barry. Now, the Knowles of hell, and here to punt is Clark. He'll be kicking to Buckley, and Terrell will have a return. Watch this from his 30-yard line. Here it comes. 35, headed to the far boundary. Dipping it to 40. To the 45, 46-yard line. Greenway player on the field, and a flag goes down too. Often you'll get a clip in that situation when players are changing direction. The flag fall is way back on the line of scrimmage, back at the 25 of Tulane. It'll be interesting to see what the call is. Florida State with the lead 14 to 3. Timeout on the field. We'll be back. Watch what happens to Tulane's Ryan Thomas, number eight. He is the injured Greenway player to the left of your picture. Comes in low and tries to cut Buckley, and he ends up just hammering his helmet into the turf of Campbell Stadium. You see it rolling off there. No folks, his head's not in it. But he feels like it is right now. Shannon Baker and Matt Fryer are the two receivers in the game for FSU, the training staff working on Thomas. The flag, the indication was, Keith, I thought, a face mask, but it may have been inadvertent. This is Lee. Or decline, because nothing was stepped off, and by that I mean an inadvertent flag. Amply across midfield and to the two-lane 49-yard line, Shane Wiegand, another stop from his weak side linebacking position. The number is building up now for Amp Lee, who has carried the ball five times for a total of 36 yards. Better than a six-yard per carry average. And Edgar Bennett, too, is having a big night. Four carries in this football game. 17 yards. Here comes Lee. What a hole on the right side. Mike Morris will get healed in a hurry if guys like Patrick McNeil, a freshman tight guard, Kevin Mancini on that right side, keep opening holes like this. Morris is going to want to be back in there playing. First down, Thornhill on the stop for two lanes. Keep a look at Edgar Bennett here. You're going to see why he does other things than run. Good, good up front point of attack, blocking, and Lee just explodes into the backfield. It's a first down. First and 10 at the two-lane 36, and here comes Florida State once again, leading 14 to 3. Keldon Airborne, the welcome Airborne, and what a grab by Shannon Baker. Put those white gloves up into the air, snared it, pulled it down. Thornhill and Hamilton on the stop. We talked earlier with Mike Morris. Here's the young freshman who is taking his place, Patrick McNeil. Redshirt freshman, 6'3", 280, Palmetto, Florida native. He played 94 snaps, Keith. 
against Brigham Young on opening night. When I played 100 snaps, 100 plays was your letter. He almost lettered in a game. Nicknamed the rookie, because last year being a freshman was always around, but redshirted, not a rookie anymore. No, he's not. And no rookie here. Ampley dancing to the 22. Flag goes down from three separate officials. We will have an obvious face mask. Mike Stay was the safety man holding on to the cage of Ampley. That is a pickup of 14. That's the big one. A personal foul call. It comes with 9.29 remaining in the first half. Our referee, Rod Daly. Personal foul, tackled by the face mask, half the distance to the goal, first down. There's a five-yard face mask inadvertent, and then there's the personal foul face mask. You want to see Stay just grabbing. Watch the head come all the way back around. And Miss Lee over in uh, the panhandle is not happy right now. FSU and its offensive coordinator in Brad Scott and head coach Bobby Bowden had designed a game plan with what they called fastball plays. Quick hitting plays at the line of scrimmage. The fastball's humming right now and Amp Lee looking like a million bucks. He hits it quick. Look at this. Cut down at the seven yard line. Roscoe Davis, Shane Wigand from the linebacking court. Tulane plays conservatively on defense, Keith. Not stunning as much as we have seen them in years gone by. Very vanilla. That can make life tough if you have deep handoffs, slow developing plays. Exactly, and that's why you alluded to the fact that Brad and, and Coach Bowden had put in their fastball plays. The defensive lineman for Tulane, four of them will stand, try to stand the, the offensive lineman up and read as opposed to stunning or trying to slide through gaps. Therefore, you have to attack them quick. New receiver in the game, Matt Fryer. Casey's hit six of his last seven passes, and he misses an open Shannon Baker when he felt heat. Got knocked down, did Weldon. Baker had an inside move on the defensive back, and Thornhill was open for what would have been FSU's third score. And Casey simply missed him because of the defensive pressure. Watch the route by Baker here. He's going to get upfield pressure. He's going to turn out and then back in. Weldon getting pressure in his face can't deliver the ball. Is a little bit errant with it, but Baker open. Weldon just not able to get the ball to him because of good Tulane pressure in the backfield. 128 yards through the air and two scores for that young man who may be this nation's finest quarterback. He faces the challenge here of third and six. The blitz is on, and that left Bennett wide open, and Casey overshot him. A rare blitz by Tulane. Nobody was left to pick up Bennett. And he was wide open. Well, there's where Weldon uh, gets a, a, a A plus and about a D minus. A plus for the read and a D minus for delivery. And there's nobody of the 60 plus thousand in Campbell Stadium right now that uh, feels any worse than Casey does. Wide open Bennett just misses him. Bobby Bowden said that this young man in Dan Mowry, who set to attempt the field goal, the first three kicks he had in Anaheim, Bowden said, I thought he was bowling. They were low line drives. From 25 yards away, this one, coach, is more to your liking, I'm sure. Florida State pulling away from Tulane, leading 17 to 3 in the first half. More after this from NCNB National Bank of Florida, the lone source. How to improve your home involves some difficult decisions. You know, we could use a bigger kitchen. Nuh-uh. A new bath. Uh-uh. Kitchen. A new bath. We could use a... At NCNB, we don't think financing should be one of them. Okay, a bath. Upstairs. Upstairs? That's why we've set up a loan information. Welcome to Seminole Football on Sunshine Network, where the Knowles, Dan Mowry, has just booted his first field goal of his still young varsity career, just a freshman. This one from 25 yards away. The Knowles have built their lead now into an even two touchdowns. The reason they had to settle for that field goal by Mallory is a Casey Weldon off target twice, Keith. Once to Baker, who was open in the end zone, and Bennett, who was all alone at the five. Well, we'll give him credit, uh, give Tulane credit for good pressure on the Baker miss, but uh, Weldon will hear about this in film session about this event. He was wide open. Seven plays covering 47 yards. It took three minutes and two seconds off the clock. Fumble fingers in the end zone by Tulane. The ball will be downed by Hamilton back there. The drive capped by Mowry. Three pointers. <laughs> 
Tulane with the football back. It was three and out last time, and the defense, which has played admirably well for the Greenies from New Orleans, held this vaunted Seminole attack to just the three. Tulane needs to sustain and give that defense a rest, and if you're an FSU fan, watch those gold helmets come flying toward the quarterback, Billy Duncan, who begins first and 10 from his 20-yard line, Chance Miller, the lone setback. Miller cradles the football, protects it with both arms, and fights forward to the 22-yard line, setting up second down. There are a number of Florida players, Florida natives, who are starting and playing for Tulane this evening, including the center, Charles Herman. He's from Panama City. Look at all these guys from the Sunshine State that went to school in New Orleans. Jan Check defensively. And for FSU, Sean Jackson, Coward, Adams, come from Bayou Country. Second and eight after the pickup of two by Miller. Bobble snaps in the center, and Duncan fell on the football. Herman, you know, you say something nice about Herman being from Florida, and he can't execute the snap with Duncan. It always happens anytime you talk about someone throwing eight completions in a row they miss, or they go uh, uh, talking about the hometown and where they're from and the fact they're coming back to the Sunshine State to play and a bobbled exchange. Florida State with mass substitutions going to their nickel package. Florida State runs two first-team defenses. They run their basic first team, and they run their nickel first team. And there are a lot of new faces when the nickel's out there, like right now. Yeah, they got five defensive backs there now for FSU. It's third and nine, an obvious passing situation. Tulane from the shotgun. Duncan hits the release. It's Miller made the grab. This will not be enough for a first down, however. The Knowles leveled Duncan. The first man there that cracked him in the backfield was FSU's McIntosh. Tulane's Andy Obramowitz, number 65, trying to provide protection to set up that screen to Miller, but the defense just came through too fast, and the secondary had it read as well. Hunting Clark, three and out a second time. The heavy rush, can he get it away? He just does so. He went down, no flag. Buckley with another return from his 27. He'll work this way, looking for interference. He was pointing direction to his specialty team teammate. Wilbur Gilmore hustled out and made the tackle for Tulane. A punt of 50 yards. Excellent by Chip Clark under a heavy rush. And Buckley brought it back seven yards. Clark's leg is going to get in shape real quick. Had eight punts last week. Also a little bit of a thespian out there at Tulane. A little bit of a, let's fall back and see if we can get one of those little yellow hankies. No flag on the play, first and down. Ten yards to go, Florida State. There's Terrell Buckley, who's played well in the secondary this evening, and it's always a threat to go the different distance on special teams. Operating out of the eye, first and ten. Weldon goes airborne. He has it complete to the far side. Upfield at the 40, and ahead to the 41, the 42-yard line. It's Lonnie Johnson, the lumbering tight end, who already has a score tonight. Close to the first down, Brandon Hamilton, the cornerback, knocked him down to about a half yard shy of the first down stick that he needed to reach at the uh, Florida State 43. Florida State running combination routes. You see Terrell, Eric Terrell, number seven, Patton, uh, his teammate. Terrell had run a corner route, tight end underneath, Weldon with a good read, converts it. Bennett and Lee split behind Weldon on second and one. Here comes Ham. With speed, outside the midfield, first down, and shut back. Some excellent blocking out there. Lonnie Johnson, who just made the catch, had a nice block in the flat. Bennett leading the way as well. Thornhill and McDowell from the Green Wave secondary made the tackle, but not before. FSU picks up another first down and continues to march. Watch how Ampley protects the football. He gets in traffic, he's a little upright. When he gets in traffic, he gets down. Watch him wrap that ball up and he's got defenders all over him. When he finishes, he's got both hands on the football. Terrell, wide to the left side. McCorvey to the right side and tap dancing across the midfield stripe and right in the middle, that's Seminole emblem at the center of the field. Sales, Ampley, Michael Batiste. The senior defensive end from Beaumont, Texas, made the step. A representative from on-field instruction going on with the Tulane coaching staff. 
You'd be amazed at the adjustments that go on during the ball game. Complete game plans can be altered based on what a given defense or a given offense is doing. And it's Florida State, as much as anyone else, is renowned for their halftime adjustments. New tailback, Sean Jackson, replaces the workhorse in Lee. Weldon fires, and he overshoots. Again, an open receiver, this time Eric Terrell, at the 30-yard line. Terrell had position. Thornhill came up and whacked him on the back of the helmet. We introduce you to Sean Jackson, a New Orleans native, attended St. Augustine High School there. The number two tailback in an arsenal for Bowden and Company. Last year, Average close to eight yards to carry, 7.9 to be exact, and he showed that was no fluke when he carried the ball nine times for 75 yards against the Cougars in Anaheim. He's still in the game. It is third and seven. And the catch is made close to the first down marker by the tight end in Johnson over the middle. That's a tough route to run, Keith, when you're going to get hammered, and you can hear the crack all the way up here when Hamilton and Wiegand sandwich Johnson. Watch the right side of your screen. Johnson's going to work inside and then back out. And Tulane all over him. And he's about probably two feet, maybe two and a half feet, a yard, if you will, away from the first down, fourth and one. And Coach Bowden has decided to go for it. They have removed Terrell and added a tight end. And Hart. Hart and Johnson, two tight ends. The long receiver, McCarty. And the toss. This is Sean Jackson. Jackson earns the first down and is thrown out of bounds. Inside the 40 to the 38. Thornhill on the stuff. Significant there perhaps that uh, Coach Bowden left Jackson in the game on a big play like that. Florida State wanting to get Jackson some playing time. Oh, Coach Bowden and the coaching staff not afraid to go to him now just like they would go to Amp Lee. Sweep. I'm a little surprised at the call. I'm definitely not surprised with Jackson being in, but you would think that they would go with some type of fastball, quick-hitting play. This time they go with the toss. And it's a good call in retrospect. Florida State with the lead, 17 to 3, and flags fly before the ball is snapped. The play clock shows zero. Illegal procedure, however, is ruled against FSU. The Noles have not been penalized in a while. <laughs> The guilty party, Reggie Dixon, the strong side guard, number 73, the senior move prior to the snap. For Coach Bobby Bowden, the second winningest active coach in college football. He trails only Joe Paterno of Penn State, who picked up his 230th win today. 100,000 to nothing, I think, was the final score. Uh, I think it was along the lines of the national debt. 80-something <laughs> to nothing over Cincinnati. Well, then, after the penalty is stepped off, has time, guns deep down. to get the tight end in the game, and Lonnie Johnson has killed Tulane in the first half. That's his fourth grab tonight. Florida State doing a great job of keeping the safeties occupied. The safeties are looking outside, and that leaves the tight end wide open over the middle. Now, the next step, something you'll probably see as we continue on and on into the second half, is to get the running back upfield, either Bennett or Lee or Jackson or Paul Moore or whoever, and try to attack that middle seam with those two deep safeties being occupied to the outside. Three tight end formation following the gain of 36 yards. And Sean Jackson still in the ball game for Ampli. Picks up a couple of those. He finds the going tough inside the five. And right at the five yard line stripe is where the football will be placed for second down. Sean Jackson lauded by his coaches for his confidence and the maturity that he gained between his freshman year and his sophomore year. He impressed me with how mature he was when he arrived here from New Orleans a year ago. Coach Brad Scott described him as having the best dip and lift. When he makes contact, he gets low and explodes through the would-be tackler. Florida State has called its second timeout as Casey Weldon comes over to talk to Coach Bobby Bowden and the man that we've been talking about quite a bit with the headset on to the left of your picture in Brad Scott, the offensive coordinator. As Keith said in our opening comments to you tonight, this is a rare occasion, a number one team playing 
in Doe Campbell Stadium. What makes this one even more special is that this time, rather than the Pitt Panthers led on that occasion by Dan Marino, this is FSU, ranked number one. And double ones, Casey Weldon heads to the huddle, and we will show you that uh, Western Michigan is next up for Florida State. We will have that game for you here on both pay-per-view and on Sunshine Network. And then following a week off, the Michigan Wolverines will follow and the remaining schedule, as you see. Florida State with 180 yards passing. Bonnie Johnson with 130 yards receiving. Now that's a bet I wouldn't have taken at the beginning of the game. <laughs> Bonnie Johnson, a career night for the sophomore from Miami and Miami Senior High School. Following the timeout, second and five. Here comes the toss to Jackson. The Knowles appear determined to get that young man a score, and he high steps it inside the five, perhaps to the four-yard line. Tulane's defense, though, has impressed BP. Shane Weekend and Ray Benford, two of the three linebackers in that 4-3 scheme, stuck those white helmets into Jackson pretty hard. They really do. This defense will get after you. It's not a defense that's timid. When we say that they're kind of a slow read up front or a soft read up front, it's not that they're playing timid. It's just that they're trying to see and read and go, go what happens. And uh, it's a very aggressive defense, but playing in a different way. The tight end, Hart, comes in motion to the near side. And firing his way, it's caught for a touchdown. The tight end score again. The third TD by the tight end. The man beaten was Rod McDowell, who nearly was able to pat it away. You're familiar with throwing to the back, familiar with throwing to the Fab Four. This has become the dynamic duo rather than the Fab Four, and Hart and Johnson, the tight end. Hart was split out, flexed just a little bit, just runs a simple flare pattern. Great touch by Weldon to lead that ball away from the defender, but in a position where Hart could bring it in. Now he's a perfect three of three at PAT. He's out of the three-point field goal as well, and it's 23 to three, Florida State. Warren Hart with two receptions, both for touchdowns, and Lonnie Johnson with a 78-yard TD catch. Off the strong right arm of Casey Weldon. Florida State's offense becoming untracked. A 21-point cushion for FSU here in the first half. 93 seconds to go prior to intermission. Checking up on scores around the nation today in the world of college football. We'll have those scores for you in just a moment. There you go. Number three, Michigan. Found the Boston College feisty early. They were playing that in Beantown. Michigan wins it. Washington, little trouble with Stanford. There is that 81 to nothing Penn State score. Florida in a big way. Notre Dame a winner. Clemson a winner. The only upset in the top 20 was Texas, which fell at Mississippi State. The Longhorns ranked number 13. Hamilton bobbles the ball and then gets past Florida State's first line of defenders and brings it out to the 29-yard line. Stayed with it, and the first wave missed it. Hamilton with a 26-yard return. We've talked about it before, but oftentimes when the deep receiver drops the ball, the pursuers let up just a little bit. That time, Hamilton able to get out. There's that Texas upset. Don't you know Jackie Sherrill is celebrating tonight? That's been a lot to him at his first year at Mississippi State, having formerly been at Texas A&M. Nebraska pounds on Utah. Iowa over Hawaii. Bama rolls. And Ohio State, amidst some controversy, picks one up for John Cooper, their head coach. Duncan to Miller. Nowhere to go. Dan Footman. A junior defensive end. Hit him in the backfield. A couple other scores for you. Syracuse playing in its dome wins. And Baylor will go at it with uh, the Miners tonight at home. And Western Michigan, our next full for FSU. Little trouble with Jerry Faust, Zips of Akron. 55 seconds and counting here. Remaining in the first half, we'll have the president of Florida State, Dr. Dale Lick, join us at the half. 
Looking forward to introducing ourselves to him. On the receiving end of the Duncan toss is Wilbert Urson. Upfield at the 34-yard line, Kurt Carruthers, the linebacker. Made the snap for FSU. 30 seconds, Tulane not in a big hurry to get plays off, probably wanting to just go in and regroup. They've been effective at times on offense, especially with that two tight end, two wide out, one back set running the ball at Florida State. Some adjustments have been made. Florida State a little tougher up front. But gaining on the play was of eight yards, third and fourth. Final play of the first half. Delay may not run it. They won't. First half is over. Tulane had played fairly well in the first quarter, but America's top team shows its dominance. And for the very first time in history, playing as number one, Florida State shows that it deserves to be number one. 24 to three in Dope Campbell Stadium. A very full halftime show awaits us here. We mentioned the interview with Dr. Dale Lick, the new president at FSU. We'll have that for you, statistics, and highlights from the first half, and we'll enjoy the marching chiefs as well. All that ahead here on Sunshine Network. No fans recognize this face, but in a uniform as opposed to in a coaching outfit, Stan Shiver, 1988 graduate, taking over. Stan, what's it like uh, in terms of a transition from the field to the bench? Uh, it's a lot different. Uh, still get the excitement, though. Now, the defensive backs were supposed to be uh, one, an area of suspect this year. Leon Fowler and, and uh, John Davis taking over relatively new spots as starters. How have they come along? They've come along great. You know, John missed the spring because of a shoulder injury, uh, had surgery on it, came back, did a great job during two days. He's really coming along. And how about in terms of depth? If we look at the, the line, the linebackers, and, and see almost too deep at every spot, how about the guys backing up the starters? Very good. Uh, you know, when the backups come in, we don't lose a whole lot, and that means a lot down the stretch of the game. Now, one young man that Seminole fans hope to be looking for, of course, is Derek Brooks, who was the uh, USA Today High School Defensive Player of the Year, and apparently he was very impressive uh, when he came into camp. Very smart kid, uh, a great guy, works hard, and uh, it won't be long before he cracks that, that lineup. Now, a lot of people may not know the, the Shiver tradition uh, from Tifton, Georgia, is continuing here this year. The youngest Shiver, Clay, has come in. Was, was there any uh, decision whatsoever that Clay might go somewhere else? Uh, it was his decision. We left it up to him, and uh, I'm kind of glad he came down. Well, Clay, of course, plays center. You're a defensive back. He may have pushed you around a little bit if you had something to say. Yeah, I, I kind of keep away from him now, uh, you know, especially at meal time. All right, Clay. Stan, thanks a lot for joining us. Paul, back to you. As Stan. The Seminoles leading by three touchdowns, 24 to three. Casey Weldon has thrown three separate touchdowns, and our own Stacy Strazes had an opportunity to visit with the family Weldon earlier this week. This is the only place these days where FSU quarterback Casey Weldon is not the big fish in the big pond. Hey, what you got on there, Jimbo? Hooked on the lure away from the limelight, hanging out with the guy who snaps him the ball, FSU center Robbie Baker. Me and uh, Rob, working with the rest of the team, trying to, you know, sell our videotape of how to catch fish. Perfect catch. I have to be able to work that thing right up underneath the branch and hit the hole sometimes, and uh, it definitely helps being able to throw the football and rod and reel. It was right here in Tallahassee at the North Florida Christian School where Casey cast his football talent across town to the attention of FSU. You could say both made a big catch from a small private school. It's not a fish tale, but rather a boyhood dream come true. Pressure coming and he stays on his feet, throws it downfield, intended for Bruce the same, the same, makes the catch, touchdown Florida State! It was two years till number 11 was the number one starter. They said a light came on, but I never, I don't know, I was never aware it wasn't. It went off. Weldon will sprint out to his right and throw his first pass. Hawks the arm. Now he wants to go long. Downfield, he's got Dossie wide open. He makes the catch in the first one. To the 15, to the 10. And there's a Florida State touchdown. Touchdown, FSU. 
you know, I realized to a lot of kids, you know, we're, we're all heroes, all of us that play on the team, and uh, but, uh, we're no better than they are. We're just average guys that can, can play a, a stupid game called football. But Casey is not your average college guy. He never misses a Sunday supper with his parents and four sisters. He's a husband. He's a father. Okay. Happy birthday to perspective you know i might think i was that big man on campus but i do wish i could sing and surf i feel like i've arrived in that's why i'm that's probably why I'm but most of all casey would like to be an nfl draft pick you know i got a cousin that's a cleft pilot and i'd love to just send her to the best and uh take care of her she's uh she's special you know they, those, those babies always are and there's others Casey hopes he has the opportunity to help. I've had so much uh, help, you know, along the way. It's unreal. I, you know, I couldn't, if I had to thank everybody, it'd be here forever. So many people have helped me out. And uh, I just want to return the favor. I guess, you know, lately I've realized there's, there's not a whole lot more to life than uh, family and friends. If Bobby Bowden goes on to win this game, he will tie Jess Neely for the number seven all-time victory. Mark in college football, 207 wins. He's well on his way, 24 to three. As we welcome you back to Doe Campbell Stadium with Keith Jones, I'm Paul Kennedy. When you hear the name Lonnie in Tallahassee, you normally think of Lonnie Anderson. But with all due respect to Burt Reynolds and his beautiful wife, Lonnie Johnson has had a big first half here for FSU. Well, it's been the tight end show here at FSU. Here's the first look. First play of the game. Weldon with a little play action fake and wide, wide open. Johnson shows a little speed here. Lonnie putting some of uh, those Hollywood moves on some defenders <laughs> on downfield. Converts FSU's first score. That was the very first snap for the Knowles. How about that young quarterback, Duncan, and Steve Ballard, his dangerous wide receiver. This was a 37-yard first quarter game. Duncan and Ballard not to be outdone. Ballard makes a great over-the-shoulder catch. Duncan do a good job of getting the ball to him. Converts for a first down for Tulane. Casey Weldon second touchdown strike again to a tight end. This time Warren Hart. Not as far and a little different guy. 84 instead of 85. The first of two that Hart would have. Tight ends accounting for three touchdowns for Florida State. Here's the second one to Hart. Third one on the night. Makes a good catch and then turns upfield through a blocker. Dives over the goal line. Florida State along with a Maori three-pointer up 24 to three. With the big lead, here are the numbers. Tulane with Six first half first downs. You see total offense two, 287 to 150 for Tulane. Time of possession. That's why Tulane is somewhat respectable here. Nothing out of line. This is a sophomore laden football team in Tulane that has done reasonably well against America's very best in Florida State. Ranked number one in all the nation. We are set to go with the second half. Glad you're along with us. A very warm night in Tallahassee. Here on Sunshine. End over end. This will come down for FSU to its very dangerous and somewhat fleet of foot Tiger McMillan, the freshman. McMillan out to the 25 yard line. The marker right at the 25. Brought it back. 17 yards. Well, he's not a perfect 10, but he's looking to be a perfect 8. Florida State 7-0 when he's at the helm, unbeaten. And he has him halfway home to that 8th straight win under his direction. Hits along at a 67% completion clip, 58% completion career-wide. Bettering those numbers in the first game and a half of 1991. McCorvey and Terrell open at the wide receiver position. This is Ampley with a block from Bennett across the 30, out to the 35, 37-yard line, first down. Edgar Bennett reminds me of another Floridian, a guy who plays for the Dolphins by the name of Tony Page with the way that he blocks. Bennett 
It's like having another guard out there, and he led interference and amply did his job, too. And on their very first snap of the second half, the Knowles pick up their 13th first down. Has a career of being known as blocking for Dexter Carter and Amp Lee. That might not be a bad career in and of itself. From the 37-yard line, Lee looking to turn the corner, ran out of the tackle of the defensive end, Michael Batiste, but couldn't get away from some support that came in the form of Brandon Hamilton, number 34, and that guy there, Shane Wiegand, number 47. A, a loss on the play of three yards. It is second and a dozen for FSU from the 35-yard line. To the near side right comes Eric Terrell. Terrell with three grabs in the first half, making a fourth here. Dumping it underneath. Instead, Weldon goes to Ampley. And Lee turns it up. Field falls forward across the 40 to the 41-yard line, setting up third down and uh, pretty long still for FSU, which must cross its own 47 to earn a fresh set of downs. Kevin Janchek, the fine right tackle, the senior for Tulane, on the stop. Watch Lee sneak out of the backfield, play action fake, and then just move upfield. Jantek does a good job of staying close by. He's there to make the tackle. Janchek, a Florida native, one of the many for Tulane. He's from St. Pete. On third down, can they earn it? No. Bennett was looking up, and uh, he got a how do you do from Robert Gilmore. In that nickel package, the sophomore from New Orleans, number 23, cracking. That's something Bennett will remember. And the Knowles are uh, going to have to punt this ball away. That comes in the form of Scott Player, who boomed a 50-yarder in the first half. He'll be standing inside his 30 and kicking to Wilbert Urson, the split in for Tulane. The kick is in the air. It is very, very high. Up comes Urson. Now he's going to let it hit. It takes a two-lane bounce. It is touched by a Seminole at the 28-yard line. Batted around, actually, and from the 28-yard line, Tulane is in business, down by three scores in the third. One of the things Coach Bowden and Brad Scott wants the offense to do in the first series of the third quarter, second half, is to come out and establish itself. Florida State not successful here in their first series. Duncan and company with the same task. Greg Davidson's group, his coaching staff, would want them to come out and establish something here in the third quarter if Tulane hopes to get back in the ball game. Tulane and its loss to Ole Miss a week ago in the Dome ran only six plays in the third quarter. Three and out, three and out. They need to sustain. For Billy Duncan, a lone setback in Miller, will take the football, protected, takes a shot, comes across the 30, out to the 31-yard line. Todd McIntosh hitting first, and Joe Ostaszewski, the nose guard, was second there. Joe Ostaszewski, like his twin brother Henry, both 6'3", and tipping the scales at 264 from Boynton Beach. FSU legend, there's Henry, who starts at the left defensive end position, and Joe works in the nickel package, and backs up James Cheney. A pickup of but one for Miller, who is still the lone setback for Duncan. And on second down, play action to him. Duncan, deep up the right boundary, Hunting Urson, who dives, does he hold on to it? No, he doesn't. That was nearly a miraculous catch. Urson paid for it in double coverage. I think he had the wind knocked out of it. He lost the ball when he hit the turf. McCorvey was there for FSU. Fowler was there for FSU. This was nearly one for the two-lane highlight film. Double coverage to the top. Good play action. Urson just runs a streak pattern. Almost comes up with, as you said, Paul, a very miraculous catch. He's still down. Duncan's going to take the opportunity while he's down to go over and confer with the Tulane Brain Trust. Rick Davis there with a the headset on. Well, there's timeout on the field while that injured player and nursing's being attended to. Back with more in a moment. There's the sophomore, Wilbert Urson. None the worse for wear, he took that tumble, came down on the ball, trying to make a diving effort in double coverage. It all goes for not, it's third and nine now. Billy Duncan to throw, feels the heat, steps up, and he's hit, knocked down, the ball flutters harmlessly to the turf. Fourth down, Todd McIntosh. He's had a great game tonight. 
for FSU, number 94, the sophomore from Richardson, Texas. He was there. You see Dan Putman in your screen, too. Todd coming off along with Carl Simpson, number 95, and Kurt Carruthers. Defensive line for Florida State, somewhat of a question mark coming into camp. I don't think there's any question marks here. Chip Clark can punt, Keith. He can really hit it. 10-man rush. Low snap. He looked to fake it and then sends this one pretty high into the sky. Buckley up. Makes the catch. <laughs> Ripped it away from a defender after he called for the fair catch, which he made. The ball will be spotted between the 33 and the 34-yard line. So Tulane has given the ball right back to Bobby Bowden. A little bit of a hesitance here. You can't do that in the pros. If you do that in the pros, your people will get off the line too quickly because they have to wait until the ball is kicked. But in college, people can release as soon as the ball snaps. Give it a little extra time, forcing Terrell Buckley to the fair catch. A 36-yard punt. First and 10 for the Knowles, leading 24-3 from the 34. Weldon wants to throw, and he has a receiver in Kaz McCorvey. Look at him fight for that first down. First down, Knowles, as we check in with Barry Milligan on the sideline. Well, Paul, obviously a very warm and extremely humid night here in Tallahassee, and the Seminole coaches at halftime we're very quick to assure the team they're doing just fine. You'll continue to see Florida State platooning a lot of players. They really feel that the Heat may be a more formidable opponent than Tulane. Brad Scott in particular very pleased with the offensive output, even though they feel that Weldon, even though he was 12 of 18 in the first half, could have been even sharper. Did you see that Band-Aid he had on and the Stacy Strasis feature on him as he throws it complete, battling for close to a first down, Kez McCorvey. It was a Big Bird Band-Aid he got from his uh, daughter in Kendall. Wife Lori had put on his chin. Can you start calling him Big Bird? We've heard folks comparing to Joe Montana. I like blonde-haired Big Bird Casey Weldon. There you see his numbers 15 to 21. His wife Lori back in school at Florida State. She actually has a class, I believe, with my wife, who is also back on that 13-year plan. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. If Angie wants to take her time, let her take her time. It took no time for Tulane to surrender another first down to Edgar Bennett. You just got to be impressed with the maturity of this Florida State backfield with Weldon and Bennett and Hamp Lee. Weldon and Bennett, the seniors, Lee, a junior, they don't get excited, they don't get rattled, it's very workmanlike, businesslike, but it's not lackadaisical, it's with great intensity, but it's with great maturity, and I tell you, you just, you just got to stand back and be so excited about what these three guys are able to do together, along with a very good offensive line and oncoming receivers. That maturity and ruggedness, too, turns the first down, Bennett carrying deeper into Tulane territory. Ray Benford from his inside linebacking position made the stop. Bennett especially, you know, could have gone pro, talked about it, sought out some advice from family and friends, decided to come and stay at Florida State. Coach Bowden said of him after the BYU game last week that whatever he would have signed for in the NFL last year, he doubled. And I'm not so sure that Coach Bowden isn't exactly right on target. Up 24 to three. Lee starts left, goes right, breaks into daylight, still on his feet inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. Between the hashes, there may be no one better than Florida State's junior from Chiplet, Amp Lee, 195 pounds of lightning. Brandon Hamilton from the secondary on the stop after the gain of 16 yards. Doesn't possess that blinding speed, but he's got that great agility. And watch as he gets in the traffic, he'll get lower. He'll get lower and he'll cushion himself and use his moves in order to make people hit. Or if they do, or make people miss, or if they do get a hit, it's not solid. Here he comes again with the dip at the line of scrimmage and now the second dip to carry him to the 19. Even running against the grain, he, he lowers that shoulder, just weaves and bobs. And he's doing so with a, a great deal of calmness about him in some very dangerous territory along the line of scrimmage. Florida State pulls a guard, kind of misdirection. He's working down the line. The one thing that Coach Billy Sexton, the running back coach, will tell him, once you get out there, let's get north and south. Let's don't keep running east and west. 
If it's not able, you're not able to break it big, let's get what we can and get back in the huddle and go again. As the wave swirl sold out to Campbell Stadium, Edgar Bennett is hit, loses the football, and then it's pounced on by a Seminole. That was a loose ball. Robbie Baker had to come back and dive on it. Slowed at the line of scrimmage. Edgar Bennett uncharacteristically had Ray Benford, the middle linebacker, knock it out of there. And Baker heads up the junior center from Fort Myers, dove back behind the line to recover it for FSU. Good hit by Benford, knocks it out. Watch Baker finally find it. Looks like he's going after that bass that we saw during the halftime report during the week. <laughs> not going to let that thing get out of the boat. Baker not going to let that pigskin go over to the greenway. Third down and seven now after the loss of two. Weldon upstairs, floating it. Here is Bennett. That's a first down and more. Second effort earns the 12-yard line. Gilmore, the quarterback, made the stop finally. Bennett determined after making the mistake to atone for it and the second effort paid off. Bennett with 64 career receptions coming into tonight. Just circling out of the backfield, getting over the middle. I don't know, Paul, if he was at the first down marker right there, but he lunges that extra effort to be sure that he got it. Great field presence. Knew exactly where he was, where he needed to go. You just can't say enough good things about him. The 16th completion for Weldon. His very first tonight, however, to Edgar Bennett out of the backfield. First and 10, the nose marching, driving at the 12-yard line. And please, dancing inside the 10. I keep using that word, dancing. He is bouncing off his tiptoes. Thornhill, another step. Thornhill's had a bunch of it. Four tackles tonight. McDowell was the leading tackler at halftime for Tulane from the secondary with four. Tulane's defense has made Florida State go the long way, and the Knowles have been patient with these 10 and 12 play marches. You see Mancini and McNeil over there, guard and tackle, slanting down, pulling around Reggie Dixon, and Abel and Lee to get upfield. And Lee and Bennett are split behind Weldon on second and six. Weldon with a flare on him, looking, holding on to the legs, and he throws into the end zone. He's got a touchdown! A flag down. They They're may have whistled down. Weldon down. They're going to call Weldon down. They're going to say that he could not have made forward progress, even though all he had was one foot tied up by a defender who was prone on the ground. They're going to say that he was tackled. Remember, we do not have an in-the-grass rule in college. Field level look. Watch the defender come from the right and just grab Weldon's ankle. He's just hanging on to it right there. And Weldon is going to be called down prior to the time that he releases the ball. Obviously, in pro ball, he would have been whistled very early. Weldon extremely upset. Coaching staff of Florida State extremely upset. But probably, in all honesty, a good call to protect the quarterback from injury. Now it's third and 11. How strong is Weldon to be able to stand up like that? A lot of scrimmage to 13. Weldon thinking touchdown again. Waits, waits, cuts, fires. Another tight end, Lonnie Johnson, another tight end reception. Close to the first down marker. Inside the three-yard line. The point Florida State needed to reach was the uh, two-and-a-half for the first. And our referee, Rod Daly, will stop the clock with 6.39 remaining in the third and bring on the sticks. No, he won't. He says, oh, by the way, I look at it. That's the first down. Johnson uh, hobbling a little bit there. End zone look. Weldon's going to look to his right, look to his right. Johnson's going to clear right to left. You see him right there. Casey does a great job of reaching him. He turns upfield just enough for the first down. Somehow on the bottom of the pile there, Coach Bowden walks away. Call already been made. Gets his ankle turned or gets hobbled a little bit, but I think he'll stay in. For Johnson, that is his fifth reception tonight. Hart has a couple as well. The Twitter may have caught three touchdown passes. Bennett driving the pile inside the one-yard line. Inches away from the gold strike that designates the end zone. <laughs> Both Hart and Johnson are in the game right now, a two tight end offensive alignment for Florida State, which has driven on two lanes, took over inside their 40, and has been content to knock off six and seven, eight yard gains against two lanes. It is second and goal now at the one. McCorby, the lone wide receiver. Bennett, can he get in? He cannot. The ball 
spotted at the six inch line. And it twisting and turning and trying to squirm and finally at the last minute get the ball across. A lot of strength, a lot of power in the legs of number 22. Weldon getting his instructions from the sideline. As is Shane Wiegand, that fine linebacker for Tulane. They dig in on the 14th play of this prolonged march. The toss comes back to Lee, who scores. to register six points. 30 to three, Florida State. This is the drive offensive coaches would have liked to have to open the second half instead of the second series. You see a great job. What? It's just indescribable how Lee makes people miss him. You saw a great look at it there, how he just is able to, to hurdle a would-be tackler to stand up, go in standing up into the end zone. Steve Allen, the perfect snap. Brad Johnson, the perfect hold. Mallory Ash, the point after. 31 to 3, with 4.57 remaining in the third quarter in Tallahassee. The state leads by 28 points with less than five minutes remaining in jam-packed Doe Campbell Stadium. Another look at the touchdown from a different angle. The results are still the same. You know, Tulane's played the number one team in the country six times throughout their 98 years of college football. The last time, though, was 29 years ago, Paul, 1962 against the University of Alabama. Mickey Andrews played on that team for the U of A. Hamilton and Dupree back deep. This is Hamilton, five yards into the end zone. Obviously, they down it on one knee, out to the 20. We were asking Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator, he played on two national championship teams at Alabama, how he would compare the atmosphere here as this team, ranked number one in Florida State, drives to toward what it thinks will be a national crown. Certainly, it hopes so. He says, I don't think you can really compare the two atmospheres. It was just a different age then and now. Exactly, and Mickey there with the headset on to your right as you see Florida State scoring drive. I think the significant point is almost seven minutes. He was also saying the game in the last 10 years has changed so dramatically that you could spend your whole time doing nothing but walk throughs on assignments and forget about tackling and blocking. First and 10 from his 20-yard line. Sophomore quarterback Billy Duncan, who's grown up a lot tonight, hands to Sean Fagan. And Fagan is flattened by Reggie Freeman. Freeman had a sack of Duncan to open this game that knocked the ball free. He also made the tackle on our opening kickoff and here he is again saying how do you do to Sean Fagan. How do you do? Here's this, how's this for a package? 6'1", 237, 4'6", 40, 400 plus bench press and one of the best conditioned athletes on the team. Linebacker out of Cluiston, uh, he's got it all on paper and he's proven he can do it all on the field. Second and 13 following the loss of three that pushed the ball back to the 17-yard line for two lane. Duncan play action looks to keep it quickly upfield and does. Steve Ballard on the receiving end, shy of the first down across the 25. They'll spot the ball at the 27-yard line, and he was knocked down hard and quick by Kurt Carruthers for FSU. How's this for small world? You see Carruthers going back. Ballard, number 31 for Tulane. His father, Paul, played for Bobby Bowden at Sanford in Bobby Bowden's first head coaching stint, oh, about 25 years ago. Third down and three. Ostazewski's now into the game as Ballard floats out wide to the far side right. Duncan back pedals, plenty of time over the middle, dropped by the intended receiver Harold Cove. And there defensively for Florida State, LaVon Brown, a strong safety in that nickel package. Right there to break it up. FSU's defense does it again. The offense will get the ball back. Chip Clark, the sophomore from Leesville, Louisiana. He has had a busy night. Ten men up for the Knowles. The only man back, yes, Terrell Buckley. 
standing inside his 15. The kick, he barely got that one off, and it is a poor punt. Fair catch called for and made by Buckley going down at his 43-yard line. More from Doe Campbell in a moment. Buckley on the reception, fair catch. Stadium as we Number resume action. Sean Jackson replacing Amp Lee in the Seminole backfield. Sprints out across midfield and drives the ball to the Tulane 44 yard line. That's a first down for FSU. You mentioned it earlier, Paul, but the coach is talking about uh, Sean Jackson. Uh, another thing they say about him is he plays with a great deal of confidence. He knows that he can get the job done. He's just waiting in the wings, always ready. The Knowles with five quality tailbacks at that position. Jackson inside the 40, spun ahead to the 38-yard line. Amply, yes. Sean Jackson here. Tiger McMillan, who we have seen returning kicks, the redshirt freshman from Kissimmee. There's Marquette Smith, a true freshman as well, and one of the glittering members of Bobby Bowden's class of 1991. And Felix the Cat Harris, who is an outstanding practice player for FSU. Mr. Spring practice what they call Felix Harris. He'll go out there in the doldrums of spring, and Harris will run five times for 138 yards. William Floyd in the backfield, too, for FSU. He blocks for Jackson, who has a yard. The Seminoles will begin to substitute with 2-11 remaining in the third quarter here, and safely ahead, one would imagine, 31-3. to Ampley with the touchdown, and Casey Weldon with three separate touchdown strikes. Two to Warren Hart, one to Lonnie Johnson. Those two guys are tight ends. And Mowry with a uh, field goal and all the PAT. See Coach Bowden on the sidelines. One of the things that the coaching staff was going to work on doing this week was not showing too much. Prior left, Baker right. Weldon on the move, looking for Baker and has it. First down, Knowles at the 28-yard line. He hung that on the line. That is a tough pass to throw, Keith, running against the grain. That it is. You have a tendency to overthrow this ball. You have a tendency to try to hum it too much when you're moving. Your momentum's moving to your left. But he sets up nicely and delivers it. He goes down sidearm. I don't know if you caught it there, but went down sidearm to keep the ball from being tipped from the on-rushing to lane defender. Just a, a great adjustment and as typical of a lot of things that Casey does on the go. Weldon has only misfired six times this evening. He is 18 of 24. First and 10 the two-lane 29. Weldon goes underneath, and the catch is made by William Floyd, that reserve fullback, who we told you was in the game. A freshman 6'2", 224 from St. Pete in Lakewood High School. The man who the coaching staff believes is the fullback of the future at FSU. McDowell on the stop. The, the two words they use to describe William Floyd is not intimidated, just a freshman. But this is no big deal to him. This is football just like he played it in high school. It's just more people in the stands and you get to fly on an airplane to go to an away game. Talk about not being intimidated. He got in a fight with Dan Footman in practice. Footman who stands 6'5", a mountain of a fan. Weldon into the end zone and running out of room is Matt Fryer back at the end zone. And there's a penalty marker down as he did against BYU. <laughs> Weldon may have been across the line of scrimmage. Let's see. Or an ineligible receiver downfield. Yeah, he was across the line of scrimmage. That happened at BYU. Just lost his position on the field, came across the line of scrimmage, which you can't do. Very close call, but too close for it to have happened in the BYU game. This time clearly across the line of scrimmage. Trying to connect with Matt Fryer deep in the end zone. Love to see Fryer get a grab. Get that monkey off his back when he dropped two catches against BYU. This was a guy in Fryer who had caught 10 passes a year ago and had a touchdown, too, as a freshman. Caught about 7,000 passes in his high school career at Live Oak, Swanee County. They're still talking about where to spot the ball because there's a loss of doubt. Here's our referee and Rod Daly. I think the decision is, do they want to take the holding call? We have or holding do on the want... offense. That penalty is accepted. We have an illegal forward pass. The quarterback going beyond the line of scrimmage. That is declined. 
I had a, down. That's exactly what I was going to say. I had a police officer at an intersection once that was giving me signs like that, and I couldn't figure if I was supposed to go straight or not. I was directing traffic out of the parking lot there. Bobby Bowden's. Well, he thought it was even a little comical. Yeah. There he goes. That game face will come on real quick. Just stay right there. Now, now all right, we're serious again. Game face has been on certainly since the get-go, especially when they went west to California. They were all business out there. Well done, all business here. Another grab by William Floyd, who is hit quickly and dropped, hustling up Brandon William Hamilton Floyd from the secondary. Brandon you see how well he's having to go to his alternate receiver, his secondary receiver. He's trying to get the ball downfield, but Tulane doing a great job of keeping all the receivers in front of him. That will be the final play of the third quarter. This one is three quarters through. Florida State, America's number one ranked team, leading visiting Tulane 31 to three, four. After this, from Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Life, it does not get any better than this. See Weldon and company leading as we enter the fourth quarter, Keith, 31 to three. It looks like a glamorous job. Stand back there, it looks so pretty, throw that ball, and, uh, and sometimes you didn't get a little bit right where it hurts. Oh, Kendall, he'll be all right, he'll bounce up. Kevin Janchek for two lane, 253 pounder with the double five. You see Weldon, a perfect third quarter, eight of eight, 65 yards, and two lane struggles again in this third quarter, as it did against Ole Miss. Brigham Young only with two first downs in the entire half last week against Florida State. Both of those on penalties. So far, Tulane with no first downs here in the third quarter on their end. Florida State has had two drives of 14 plays. They open this game with a single play shot for the tight end Johnson, but they've been quite methodical tonight and continue to build this lead. Here comes Sean Jackson trying to cut outside. He's met head on at the 30 yard line by Gilmore, the quarterback for Tulane. And stop there. It is fourth down. Interesting call, third and about 12. Probably indicative of Florida State offense throttling down a little bit, although fourth and 11, they're going to go for it. Look for something downfield. They may try to get it all here. Bobby Bowden to try to hit a strike. Baker, wide left. Weldon, gunning deep, and he missed everybody. In the vicinity with Sean Jackson out of the backfield. That is a play that FSU popped against Tulane in the Dome last year. They hit it to Bennett. Not this time, however, to Jackson. Injured player hobbling off for Tulane. That's Darren McGowan, whose sister, by the way, and Linda Ann attended FSU, played basketball here. The Broncos of Western Michigan come this way next week. You can see that game both on Seminole September pay-per-view or on Sunshine Network's delay broadcast throughout the Sunshine State. We invite you to join us here in Doe Campbell as the Seminoles will be gunning for their third win of 1991, trying to stay atop the national polls. That is not easy to do when everyone is taking shots at you. Duncan still at the helm. Chance Miller, his lone setback. Tulane down 31 to three, first and 10. Miller managed to turn the corner. Oh, he was driven deep out of bounds and up there to make the stop. Willie Paldo, who backs up Kirk Carruthers on the inside. Here's Big Will as we check in once again with Barry Milligan. Well, Paul, I know Casey Weldon a little disappointed in not leading the Seminoles to another score, but that'll be all. For the senior on the night, he'll have to be satisfied with 249 yards passing and three touchdowns. Brad Johnson will come in to quarterback Florida State on the next offensive series. And it was a Johnson-Weldon duo that doomed Tulane the last two times. These two teams met a year ago in New Orleans. They both played about equal in that game. Second and seven from the 33, calling the play at the line of scrimmage. Nearly out of time, Duncan gets it off and gives the ball inside to Harold Dennis. The tailback and Dennis, maybe a yard or so. Ken Alexander, the sophomore linebacker from LBJ High School in Austin, Texas. On the stop, you see Footman in there. Alexander, Paul Doe, the inside linebackers in this stack defensive scheme. Right. Might go to the nickel here, Keith, third and seven. Yeah, Bryce Abbott in there, number 23, calling signal. Definitely in the nickel. Third down.
down here trying to hold on to the football. Needing seven. Out of the shotgun. Duncan, here comes the heat. He's being chased. Can he get it away? Well, he has to hot foot it out of bounds. The man hot on his heels was Todd McIntosh. And there's pushing and shoving going on at the two-lane sideline. McIntosh at 268 had a load of speed. And two, when Duncan went in there, oftentimes the defensive back won't know where that sideline is. Well, you can blame this one on Duncan. He got to the sidelines, and then he tried to juke and get upfield. You see Greg Davis there upset with his players. Corey Brodnax was the two-lane player. He shoved. That is a game face if I have ever seen one. Very intense. You're going to watch Duncan get over to the sidelines. He gets flushed out very quickly. See some great speed there. He's going to get to the sidelines and then try to turn upfield. That's Derek Brooks, number 10. He got blocked into the bench like by Rod McDowell. Sure. Rod McDowell uh, blocked him into it. Maybe we'll get another look at that. Bobby Bowden has thrown down his got it and gold hat in disgust. He did not like the call at all. Well, a break for Tulane, although the video evidence doesn't bear it out. It more supports Bobby Bowden. First first down for Tulane in this half, again, on a penalty. Operating in Florida State Territory. Yeah, spotted at the FSU 46-yard line. Duck and play action. Cox floats it. Downfield for Ursa. He can't make the catch. Penalty marker down. We may have pass interference. Should. Errol McCorvey was with him stride for stride. Let's take a look at that last play and see if number 11, Rod McDowell, does not block Derek Brooks, number 10, there into it. Rather than McDowell, it was 31 Steve Ballard that rolled him in there. You see a two-lane player coming off the sideline right there, number 20. Duncan a little more out of bounds on that review than I officially... We penalized 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. Little sloppy now. Back-to-back -back plays. Errol McCorvey, the pass interference call. Watch McCorvey trailing as he tries to run down Urson. Evidently, the pass interference call was called a little earlier once the ball originally left Duncan's hand. There's clearly no interference there. Nevertheless, first down to Lane. 31 to 3, and the line of scrimmage is the 31. Florida State leading. Duncan trying to put double digits on the board. Throws, and it's caught at the FSU 15-yard line. Steve Ballard, a diving grab. A gain of 16. I like this junior from Metairie, Louisiana. He can really... Hold on to the football. Dinkins was with him. He's going to cross all the way back across. Dinkins picks him up. You see 89 do a 360, but he just can't stay with him. Great touch by Duncan and a great grab by Ballard. you got to be impressed with his effort tonight. For Duncan, that was his ninth completion. He's thrown for better than 100 yards now, making only his second start. First and ten at the 15-yard line. Running hard. Directing traffic. He's got to get rid of it. Gets a block inside the 10. Hammered to the 9. He gained 6 yards on that play. Reggie Freeman, the outside linebacker for FSU, along with help. Is that John Davis? Waldo is down. Is John Davis in the game? Waldo shaken up and being attended to by Randy Orovitz, the FSU trainer. Jack Marucci out there, too, from the training staff. And we'll pause as well. 31 to 3, 12 and a half minutes remaining on opening night in Doak Campbell Stadium. Willie Poldo still on the field. The Florida State linebacker being attended to racked up when Billy Duncan, the two-lane quarterback, drove the ball inside the tent. They're looking at his left knee. Willie Pardo, number 48, left knee. We'll see if we can get a look at it here. Duncan gives a good, pretty good lift right there. You see, oh, no. You see him uh, turned all the way over. Number 48, incarnate, turned all the way over on that left knee. Watch Duncan do a good job of eluding one guy here and then turning up field. Watch 48. Get that left knee just turned underneath him. But he's up and walking off. He's just not happy. Limping badly is the Kurt Carruthers and Marvin Jones have been reinserted into the lineup. Marvin Jones has 10 tackles in this football game tonight. Second down and three. Miller dives close to the first down at the six-yard line. Marvin Jones has 11 tackles. 
He made the stop. Uh, official timeout with 12 minutes to go in the game, and they'll bring the sticks over from the far side of the field to Tulane's side of the field. Considering this is a very young team, Keith, a 41-point underdog, a rebuilding program, I think that Tulane can be proud of the effort they have shown here this evening against FSU. There certainly hadn't been any quit in this ball club. They've come after Florida State, and uh, they've not let up. The intensity still just as high as when the game started. Well, for Tulane, they misfortunately, they got the left foot spot rather than the right foot. The game of the week on Sunshine Network, live at 1 o'clock next Saturday, the Aggies of Texas A&M will take on the LSU Fighting Tigers, who found the going tough today in Athens, Georgia, but we wish Curly Holman where well in Baton Rouge. The Ags and the Tigers, those two do not like each other. Should be a pretty good football game, and you can enjoy it on Sunshine. Third and needing less than a yard against the roar. Endo Campbell, Duncan, must run the play. He has the first down. The quarterback sneak calling his own number and lunging inside the five. First and goal for Greg Davis's young team. Tulane almost, well, actually all, halfway through their eighth quarter without a touchdown. Just a simple quarterback sneak to convert the first down. First and goal at the four. They did not score a touchdown against Ole Miss. They've been held to one 35-yard field goal by Gary Butler in this game. And Tulane register their first six. 1991 now. Chance Miller won't get there. He's to the four-yard line. Kurt Carruthers filled the lane. Notice how he cuts back in Miller. Well, Carruthers stayed at home and filled the, uh, the lane pretty well, didn't he? Carruthers doing a good job of working laterally down the line from an outside position. Florida State probably going to come with some kind of stunt. Not necessarily a blitz, but slanting the lineman one way or the other and try to get through some seams. Only four yards of real estate to separate that football from six points. Ballard left, first and right, Miller. The lone setback for Duncan, working at the four. Miller, no ho-ho. And now Tulane has Florida State's defense believing they can hold him here. This has been a prolonged effort by Tulane that began back to their own 35-yard line. This will be the 10th play approaching. LeVon Brown, number 31, working from the left side of the line of scrimmage, slants in on a pinch technique, and gets a hand on the foot of Miller, enabling him to make the tackle, Miller not to get up a head of steam. Goal line defensive scheme in there. That unit for FSU. Look for play action, look for man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary. Tulane facing third and goal from the four. And the Seminole War chant rather loud. It's timeout Tulane. Duncan over to talk to his coach. We'll be back in just a moment on Sunshine. Being 31 to three, Florida State's defensive pride trying to assert itself here and hold off Tulane. And listen to the crowd in Doak Campbell Stadium. obviously has stepped out of the truck and into the stand. Third and goal at the four-yard line. Very loud for Duncan. He throws it into the end zone for Urson. Incomplete. Buckley was there defensively. Fourth and goal. Man coverage. Buckley on Urson route trying to float it over Buckley's head. Terrell had his back to the quarterback in Duncan. Timing so important, just jumping into the corner, they could not connect. End of the play there. What you do there, Buckley watching Urson's eyes. When Urson's eyes get big, 
Buckley finds the ball. Some cheerleader during uh, during part of his career here at Florida State. <laughs> I like that. Timeout, Tulane. That touchdown means a lot to them. We mentioned the fact that when they lost last week to Ole Miss, 22 to three, they did not register a TD. They want one badly here, especially with a very young quarterback. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome you back to Dope Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee with Keith Jones. I'm Paul Kennedy, Barry Milligan. Down on the field, reporting from the sidelines and returning from the sidelines is sophomore QB Billy Duncan. The 11th play unfolding now following the second timeout taken by Tulane. If Duncan Smart, he'll try to get this play off quick and not allow the crowd to get any louder than it already is. Fourth and goal. It appeared to be Corey Fuller. Terrell Buckley in the area, too. Another look. Watch the touch on this ball. Actually, not very good, but lays it up and able Young to get under it. Buckley, if he were a designated hitter in American League, he'd be batting 500. They went for two and got it. Scoring is Chance Miller. And Tulane now trails. 31 to 11. Even the Seminoles were a bit unsettled. A quick snap by Tulane caught us, obviously. And the Seminoles flat-footed. See if we have it here again. A trick play. Exactly. Muddle huddle. Offensive line off to the left-hand side. What was that again? Muddle huddle. Here's your touchdown throw. Watch Buckley get out of position. Young goes up and makes the grab. Sometimes you can get a little excited during this ball game. This little game called football. Duncan has to be excited. That is his first touchdown pass of his career. That is the first touchdown reception of fellow freshman, or rather freshman, Jay Young's career. And it means a lot to Young. He's from Pensacola and Tradition Rich, a Scambia High School. And to come home and score against top-ranked FSU, Young will remember that play the rest of his life. Young. The extra point, Duncan to Miller. 11 plays, quite patient, 422 had covered three quarters of this football field. For a guy who could hardly get the snap away when this game began, he has grown up a lot. Out of bounds on the defensive team, first down and 10. Late hit, ruled against too late. First and 10 as the ball is marched off. It'll be spotted upfield close to the 40-yard line. And Brad Johnson will be Bobby Bowden's new quarterback. Well, just under 10 minutes remaining. Brad Johnson, the three-year letterman, the senior, 6'6", 215 from Black Mountain, North Carolina. He was the starter a year ago and is now the second quarterback in this multiple quarterback arsenal for FSU. Floyd and Jackson behind him, and here is Jackson. Cut down for a loss of a pair by Shane Wiegand, the linebacker, who reacted quickly for Tulane. This Tulane defense not willing to roll over and play dead. 9.30 left in the contest. You know, it's interesting, Florida State, Coach Bobby Bowden, the master of the trick play, We've never seen Florida State run the muddle huddle in order to try to go for two, and they have it pulled on them. Tulane successful in converting a two-point conversion on a trick play. Number 81, the wide receiver to the top of your picture is Kevin Knox. Shannon Baker to the bottom of the screen. Looking out that way, it's really intercepted as Johnson hunted a 
rather Brad Johnson hunting Sean Jackson out of the backfield. But in the flat, Rod McDowell narrowly missed the interception. He's a Florida native, too, is McDowell from Riviera Beach High School. Palm Beach Gardens, or Palm Beach Gardens High School, Riviera Beach, Florida. Brad Johnson starting the first, I believe, five ball games last year for Florida State. You see his numbers there in 90, over 1,000 yards passing. Most of that year spent as a backup to Weldon, although he was the starter when the season opened. Yeah, in the last five games of the year, he had but five completed passes to Johnson. A lot of heat. Now, Brad is an athlete. He can fly. Look out. He got it away. That was caught across midfield at the 49-yard line by Lonnie Johnson, the tight end. And if he doesn't get a game ball on this one, may never get one. A huge night. Thornhill shoved him out of bounds, although Johnson was headed that way. And Brad Johnson, Johnson to Johnson, Brad to Lonnie. Brad did a great job of getting that one off. He narrowly averted being flattened. He's 6'6", but he can move. Watch him just set up and settle and deliver the ball very nicely. Johnson right there gets his left foot in, although the right foot was on the line in college. Only one count. Marcus Vela was chasing Brad Johnson's first and fifth. 31 to 11, half SU leading. And the football at midfield. Johnson cranks, fires, it's deflected off Lonnie and picked off. Intercepted by Tulane. Mike Stave, who just happened to be lucky and be in the right spot as the hard toss came off the hands of Johnson. Ten yards further downfield, there was Mike Stade for the first turnover this evening by either team. And the football belongs to Tulane, and that was not Brad Johnson's fault. That ball was right on target. First interception on the year for Florida State quarterback. See Johnson set up, he delivers the ball well. It's just gonna get tipped, and once it's up in the air, it's for anybody. That one was about full 15 yards downfield. Stage gets an early Christmas rush. First and 10 for Duncan and company operating from their 26-yard line. And the inside handoff is to Sean Fagan. Maybe a yard. We have word that Willie Poldo, the injured linebacker for Florida State, has been taken to the FSU dressing room. In fact, we can see him down to the end zone to our left, being carried on the court just now, entering the tunnel. And his left leg is propped up. So he is obviously gone for the evening. We hope no more than that. Charles Herman. Leads Tulane out over the football. Their center, the loss of one, second and 11. From the 25 yard now, getting to crack the Seminole 32. Taking off the right side. What Tulane is telling us now, Chief, is Fagan loses a yard, is that they want that clock to run and want this score to be respectable rather than putting the ball up into the air. Bobby Bowden is starting to play his reserves and Greg Davis is saying, I'm not going to start throwing on every down and have Coach Bowden start doing the same. A lot of fresh faces in there on the defensive line and, and also in the defensive backfield for Florida State. Ash rush for FSU are coming out of the shotgun. This will be a pass. The play being called at the line of scrimmage. The blitz is on two. Look out, Duncan. Well, he got it away, but he got it away so quickly he ever he overshot. Everybody. The heat was coming quickly. Kirk Carruthers was blitzing. Hey, let's check in with Barry Milligan as he has a report on Polder. Thanks, Paul. I talked a few minutes ago with team orthopedist Tom Haney, who told me that Willie Baldo definitely has some form of ligament injury. They aren't exactly sure the extent of the injury right now. They've iced down that left knee, and it's just a wait-and-see kind of thing right now. He said the main thing is to see how much swelling occurs in that left knee. But he will be re-examined tomorrow morning extensively to try and find out the exact extent of that ligament damage. That'd be a shame. A sophomore from Willie Paldo, if he was lost. Twin receivers to the far side, as you see in your screen, the man from Florida who caught the touchdown pass, Jay Young, is to the top of your picture in the slot. Number one, Wilbert Urson. Third down and seven. The heat of second time. There are others coming. What a grab by Ballard. 
in Florida State country at the 47-yard line. Incredible. Steve Ballard does it again. Duncan just hangs it up there, and somehow Ballard has the football. Ballard will remind you a lot of another Tulane receiver by the name of Mark Zeno, who set the NCAA career receiving yardage mark at his career during his career at Tulane. Great extension. Not bad coverage by Corey Fuller, but just a little more determination by Ballard and he brings it in, converts the first down for Tulane. Ballard, that is reception number six tonight for 112 yards. The gain is of 24. Duncan comes it his way again. Out of bounds, 32-yard line. Flagged out, however, in the backfield we may have holding. Seminoles are clapping, saying that's the case. Holding, yes. Tulane doing a good job of getting Ballard isolated, recognizing man-to-man -man coverage or single coverage and getting Ballard isolated. Holding against the offensive team, the penalty's in force from a spot of the foul, first down, over. That's a new rule change too, Paul. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let's see if we can see it up front. You see right there in the middle of your screen, a little hook right there. <laughs> That is a hold. A couple of plays earlier, we saw Ballard do his extend and receive number. Great extension, great concentration, catches the ball. New new revision of the rule, Paul. They do call the holding penalty from the spot of the foul and not the line of scrimmage. Dennis on the wing, Miller now, the lone setback. It's first and 24 at 39. The screen is the call. Chance has it. He has interference. Ahead of the 40, upfield, 44-yard line. Not a bad call there, got your five yards. Second down and 19 remain, however. Carl Simpson, the defensive end, with help from Big Marvin Jones, who has been all over the field tonight. Florida State's number 55. You know, Coach Bowden was saying that he thought Tulane would play this team very well. That although FSU was favored by 41, that was a slap in their face. All the writers were saying, hey, we better have a lot of notes for this. When it could get out of hand early, you're going to play a lot of people. Well, the starters are still in there for Florida State right now with six minutes to go in the game, and that's a tribute to Tulane. Todd McIntosh on the stop inside of Miller. The number ones are still out there, and all the second-teamers and third-teamers and scouts in Garnet and Gold that expected to see action tonight. It just hasn't happened, has it? Five and a half and counting. That's left in the forest. This will be a win for FSU. They'll go 2-0 and on the year. But Tulane has made some progress in its building program. Duncan against the four-man rush. Floats it down the field. And Young has it deflected. Nearly intercepted at the 25-yard line by Errol McCorvey. McCorvey doesn't have a lot of flash, as does Buckley. He is not as fast, but he's very, very steady. And he was with Young that time. Fourth down. And Clay will punt. Again, a 10-man rush. Clark will hit this inside his 30-yard line. A bouncing snap. A low-line drive punt. McCorvey will have a return from his 23. Right up the shoot he comes, and then someone lassoes him around shoot top. And he is taken back at the 28-yard line. And from that point, Florida State owns the football as Brad Johnson returns the second time to run the Seminole attack. A five-yard return by Buckley that followed a 36-yard low-line drive punt by Chip Clay. Scott Sanchez for Tulane, the reserve tight end, was the uh, Greenway player who had uh, corralled Buckley on the top of his cleats. 5.09 remaining as Johnson just now joins the huddle. Tiger McMillan becomes the third tailback for FSU, and here comes the Tigers. The redshirt freshman from Kissimmee, Florida, the 180-pounder, and the state of Florida's high school player of the year two years ago. 
Now, unlike Amp Lee or Sean Jackson, this guy's a jitterbug. This guy's got moves on a 5'10 frame, great speed. Paul Moore, a new fullback in the game two. Here's Brad Johnson, dumping it to Paul Moore. Moore on the little fullback screen, did a great job of painting it as if he was in the backfield for pass protection at the last moment. Johnson, above an on-rushing green, dumped it to Moore, and Moore carries the ball for a gain of 15. 35 yards for the Knowles and two snaps. Team move up field and then just sneak around. Johnson does a great deal job of eluding the rush. And just wide, wide open spaces up there. Moore very adept at catching the ball, as are all of the Florida State running backs. See Brad? In limited duty. And their pass is caught over the middle. McMillan inside the 30 to the 27. Vela, the linebacker on the stop. Four minutes remaining. And the clock winds. 31 to 11. Gain of nine, second and one. Works once, let's do it again. Two times, this time to the tailback. The little circle route underneath the linebackers, hoping to break something once they receive the ball and turn up field. Matt Fryer, the Seminole receiver, to the bottom of your screen. The deep toss back to McMillan. Hit hard at the 24. Runs through that tackle inside the 20, inside the 15. And he fights all the way down to the 12-yard line. Lee can carry the ball. Jackson is effective. And Tiger McMillan, too. Just another weapon for Bobby Bowden. McDowell on the stop from the secondary. Watch him explode through this tackle. Doesn't want to go down. Good blocking upfield. Just goes right through the arm tackle. Another couple of shifty moves and touch the ball twice and 36 yards. Kevin Knox flanks wide to the right side. Play action. Firing. No. Open was the receiver in the flat. Paul Moore, the fullback, is off his fingertips. Second down. That stops the clock with 3.12 showing. Chief Osceola looking on. Just a little bit too much for Paul Moore's outstretched hand. Got a reception a moment ago for 15 yards on that little screen. Is he used again here? Second down. Johnson right over the middle. Spot. Touchdown. A tight end. <laughs> Seminole record. Four touchdowns by your tight ends under Bobby Bowden. Pete, you've been here longer than I. Can you remember a game like this? I, I don't ever remember one where the tight end has been so effectively used so often. We've had situations, especially with the Reggie Johnsons and of the world, where the tight end has played a valuable role on a third or a fourth down, but not this consistently. Four touchdowns in a tight end position. Mowry converts the extra point. Here's score. 8 to 11 in Tallahassee, just 3.06 to go. Smiles and laughs all about the 61,000 folks here. One of the largest crowds ever in Doak Campbell Stadium. And the Knolls are rolling. 38 to 11 with 3.06 to go. Brad Johnson has just found tight end Warren Hart for his third touchdown reception of this game. He has three catches, Keith. All three have been TD. I'm looking I'm, at FSU last year. There, I don't think a tight end caught a touchdown pass all last year. Neither Johnson nor Roberts caught a touchdown all last year. The ball is bobbled at the goal line by Brad Dupree, and Dupree is going to find trouble. He doesn't reach the 15-yard line. That's the case. Oh, Brad Scott, the offensive coordinator, was bemoaning the fact that they were down to Warren Hart and Lonnie Johnson, and that was it this evening, that neither Brad Lundstrom or Matt Plato, who are trying to redshirt, would be available. But this has been an incredible night for Hart and Johnson. 
Here comes Duncan, who tonight in this ball game has thrown for 153 yards on 12 of 22 passing, and he has one touchdown strike to his wide receiver and Jay Thomas as well. They're getting deep in his own territory. Sean Fagan, the lone setback. Duncan guns it over the middle. And there is Wilbert Person upfield for a first down on the big gainer up to the 34-yard line. Passes completion number one, Wilbert Person. Less than three minutes remaining. Right Florida and State playing very soft top. defensively. Tulane, if they want to move the ball, should try to move it underneath, not go up top with intermediate short route. I tell you, Greg Davis and, and company have got to be proud of the effort of this young team coming into Campbell Stadium, number one ranked team, 60 plus thousand. He can keep the Knowles under 40 points. That's a great moral victory for him. Duncan was level when he let it go. And the intended receiver in Dennis out of the backfield took a shot too. Now how Duncan gets up, I don't know. Because he had a helmet hard on his chin. That was delivered by Reggie Freeman for FSU. Watch this lick that Duncan takes. Again, we talk about them being the glamour boys, and yeah, it's kind of nice and they get all the interviews, but oh, right underneath oh, the chin. Man. That hurts up here. Oh. We want to borrow Casey's Big Bird Band-Aid. <laughs> Freeman has spent a lot of time with young Mr. Duncan tonight. Second and ten. And the toss. Dennis the 35 lost the ball it rolls out of bounds it'll stop the clock at the 36. he wasn't going out of bounds was harold dennis but the lick that was passed delivered by deandre clark caused him to cough it up you can hear the wind come out up here when the ball bounded into the fsu bench harmlessly a lot of folks in there now on the defensive side of the line that's gone through fall camp the byu game haven't gotten a lot of playing time they're tired of uh, beating up on their buddies so to speak Good, hard hitting, even late in the ball game, still going out there. De DeAndre Clark there, number 91, trying to play himself back into a, a playing position or a contributing position. Bryce Abbott calling the defensive alignments now. Richard Coe's in that secondary, the backup free safety. A lot of fresh faces, 225 to play. Trailing, 38 to 11. Duncan trying to put the ball on the board. Lost the ball as he went down. They finished hard. Was in motion. Guess who it was? It caused him to go down. Try Reggie Freeman. I think Reggie's decided he wants to be an offensive back. He just wants to be on the opposing team back <laughs> in their backfield. He certainly has done that. Tulane's last win on grass. Been a while, has it not? Pretty good rivalry they have with Ole Miss. Ole Miss won today, or is winning right now, I should say, over Memphis State in Southern Cal. The strong right foot of Chip Clark sends it toward Terrell Buckley, who made the fair catch. It's fortunate he doesn't get a tonic call there. The 27-yard line, a punt of 38 yards. We will have our third quarterback in Charlie Ward for Florida State into the game, the sophomore from Thomasville. Coach Brad Scott said yesterday, he said, if we get a chance to get Ward in there, uh, don't go away. Just, just don't leave. Just stay right where you're at because you never know with this guy when something's going to happen. Don't even blink. He said don't take a commercial break. He was playing producer. Let's see if he's going to let him throw it. Well, the bootleg, he will let him throw it. Look at the speed to hit that corner. 35, 40, 41 yard line. What speed to find the corner. The FSU point guard on its fine basketball team Watching turn the corner, Gilmore and Thornhill on the stack. Uh, there's no way anybody's going to tackle him from the lateral move or from behind when he's in the open field. He's just an amazing, amazing athlete. Marquette Smith is your new tailback to the fourth tonight for the Seminoles. With 1.44 to go, they lead 38 to 11. Marquette carries the ball to midfield, spinning to the two-lane 49-yard line. Little number four is quite a package. The high school player of the year in the United States last year stayed on the step. Only about a 5'8 frame, but plenty of power and plenty of agility and great speed. 
The one thing the coaches are highest on Marquette Smith about is he seems to know where people are on the field. He's got, already got that sixth sense where he can tell where, where things are coming from, where people are coming from, and what can develop. Felix Harris joins him in the backfield. The Knowles have used eight separate running backs, three separate quarterbacks, Charlie Ward to the 39-yard line. The QB. Thomas, the free safety. Made the tackle for it to play. A lot of folks have seen action tonight late in the game for FSU. If it works one way, it ought to work the other. Just trying to get Ward outside. If there's anybody open, he'll throw it. If not, he becomes a dangerous threat in and of himself. For Tulane, their next game will come a week from tonight when they line up in Starkville against rejuvenated Mississippi State, the same team that beat 13th rated Texas today. Less than a minute remaining. Complete from Ward to an embattled Shannon Baker at the 30-yard line of Tulane. Oh, about the same inches shot on the first down. The executive producer, Sunshine Network, is Dave Olmstead. Our producer director tonight, Tom Hasted. And you see the other members of our outstanding team who have worked to bring you the Seminoles' historic home opener of 1991. We're proud to be a part of this, the first game Florida State ever played on its campus, ranked as America's top team. 49 seconds to play. Here comes Marquette. of run this is just <laughs> athletic ability and taking advantage of the god-given talents that you possess a first down for the Knowles leading 38 to 11 Marquette will test the left side lowers that head and is hit hard at the 14 yard line We've seen Ampley, Sean Jackson, Tiger McMillan, Marquette Smith at the tailback position, Edgar Bennett, William Floyd, Paul Moore, Felix Harris at the fullback, Casey Walden with three touchdown strikes, Brad Johnson threw one as well, Charlie Ward, the QB now. This will be the final play of victory number two for FSU. Ward to Marquette, Marquette at the 10, Marquette to the 5, and out of bounds with one second to go. It won't be the final play. Gilmore shoved him out that way. Oh, the crowd you can sense here. And the majority of the 60,000 fans have stayed in this stadium, the 61,801 that were here. The 11th largest crowd in FSU history have stayed around. Wonder who's going to get the ball. It might be little number four, and it might be a fake to him and the quarterback. And Ward keeping it. We hope to visit with Coach Bobby Bowden after this. Barry Milligan standing by to chat with Coach Bowden and congratulate him on trying Jeff Neely for number seven all-time victories among coaches. Here is Marquette for the end zone. He does not get in. The ball game is over. It ends with FSU knocking on the door. The number one team in America has won again. Florida State over Tulane for Coach Bobby Bowden. Victory number 206 his career. More from Doug Campbell Stadium in a moment on Sunshine Network. Florida State has beaten Tulane, and Barry Milligan is standing by with Coach Bobby Bowden. Thank you very much, Paul. Coach Bowden, this is a team that just won't quit. If you look at the numbers, it seems like a very dominating win, but a tough game tonight. Well, it was tough. Uh, Tulane had a very good scheme is not to give us anything deep. I've never seen a team that laid back, laid back, laid back, and wouldn't dare come up and take away stuff. And so it was, they made us live very slowly. Good preparation, though, uh, coming off a big win over BYU. Well, yeah, I'm glad to win the ball game. That's always more important than anything else. I was disappointed the way they moved the ball on us, but maybe we can learn from it because that offense is the same one that Michigan uses and the same one that Miami uses. And it's, it gives us fit. 
you know, towards the end of the game, an electrifying performance out of Charlie Ward and the youngster Marquette Smith. It seems like the talent is just never ending. Well, we do have some good young runners, but we had Tulane down, you know. Charlie's going to be in the battle next year for our quarterback position. He and Kenny Felder and some of the younger quarterbacks. So I'm glad they were able to get some action tonight. Anything special you'll do now in preparation for Western Michigan, perhaps looking ahead to a week off and, and, and or West Carolina in prepare, no, preparing no, for Michigan? No, nothing different. We'll just get ready for Western Michigan. We won't even think past that. Then if we get that one, then we've got two weeks to get ready for Michigan. Congratulations. Bobby Bowden, number seven all time on the NCAA coaching list. Paul? Thank you very much, Perry. And he has to be proud indeed of this. His Seminoles are 2-0 before 61,000 here tonight. 38-11, your final in Tallahassee.